by four inch yellow fabric if you were using yellow, 18 inch by six inch dark yellow fabric. And it goes down to list everything. Your rotary cutter and a mats, you're gonna make things a lot easier. So I definitely say, if you're gonna do this project, have a rotary cutter and a mat, um, and your ruler with your quarter uh, inch measurement of quilters ruler would be fabulous. Um, a fabric glue stick, I'm gonna show a little bit of a technique that can help um, with the smaller parts. So we're gonna have a look at that. Uh, in this segment and then uh, with your sewing machine as well and look it even tells you here to have your stitch length at 1.2 so no details are left out but it's nice and easy to follow um, and it's nice and clear with lots of diagrams and there's instructions on both sides um, and takes you through everything that you need as well and then of course we come to um, the actual piecing part and the paper and this is really um good paper because it's stable enough but it's not going to you know ruin your machine or anything like that um but it's fantastic and it's easy to do so i'm looking forward to showing the butterfly yeah i'm really looking forward to see some more i really enjoyed the heart they did a little bit earlier i uh, will see more of that just shortly now there's about um there's a there's 11 million things that i need to tell you at the start of every show this week it seems uh so uh every single order that you place today is gonna have a free gift Ooh, yes, it is. Uh, these wonderful uh, foil die-cut snowflakes from a Hunky Door. Every single order, while stocks last, will get those uh, in there, which is brilliant. We also have Fiverr Friday happening as well over on the website, and that's excellent because a whole host of different items there reduced down to five pounds or five dollars uh, just for today so get yourself over there have a little look in the fiber friday uh, fiber friday category and see what bargains uh, you can find gosh there's so many things to tell you about what else uh, double points on absolutely everything which is brilliant as part of our club inspire Christmas event which ends at the end of today so you will have to get a wiggle on if you want to take advantage of it you're going to get those double points also every single show we're going to be putting someone up onto mine and Ben's nice list which will be awesome uh, and you'll be winning a goodie bag but you'll also be able to as well um, go into the draw to win a £500 or $500 spend which is amazing we'll be announcing that uh, a little bit later tonight it's a brilliant show if you want to get in touch as well uh, Stacy saying hi from Tacoma Washington who else we've got in? Valerie's here. Stacey's in New York. Mary is in County Tipperary. I don't know why. There is something about that place name. Just saying it makes me happy. County Tipperary. The other one I love to say as well that I heard RuPaul say, Mexicatessen. What a beautiful word. Mexicatessen. Mexicatessen. What a great word to say. If you're ever in a bad mood, just say Mexicatessen. It cheers you up, Adam. Honestly, give it a go. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Anne Clark uh, is saying hi from Dorset. Knees in as well. Who we got? Kelly Jones is in Ohio. Ohio, Kelly. Uh, Connie's here as well. As well, A lot of people are saying how glad they are that it's Friday. It is Friday. It's a brilliant Friday. Remember, two hours of soft side, and a little bit later, we will be uh, bringing you the Hunky Dory items. Remember, all the Hunky Dory items are available on the show. Uh, they are in this show now. So head over to the website, hit the shop, the show button. You can see absolutely all of them. They are going really, really quickly though. So if you do want to make sure you've got your hands uh, on the bits you want, it's all in stock right now. I know that as people start to wake up, it's nine o'clock in the morning over on the uh, East Coast, Adam. I'd probably still be asleep if I was at home. I'm going to level with you. I'd just be maybe waking up about now. So uh, there's a load of people waking up that won't have seen those hunky dory items. Uh, and West Coasters as well should be waking up shortly too. So make sure you get your orders in before it gets busy on those. Uh, give you the details also of the paper piecing. Uh, it is brand new today. You've got 24 pieces in there, which is excellent. So you've got six uh, projects in here, you're going to get four of each, uh, and that is all there for you. Twenty-four ninety-nine, twenty-nine ninety-five. A lot of you multi-ordered in the earlier show, um, so uh, and continuing to do so now is very busy. Nice says Joe, the goodies that CC is giving us really makes it a Christmas event. I love it. I love it too. I really, really do. Any questions you've got, get them into us. But we're going to go uh, over to Adam uh, and have a little look first. So, what would you like to share with us first, and Adam? Um, so we're going to start on this butterfly and doesn't it look wonderful and like I was saying earlier there's some uh, pattern fabrics and different colours been used in here I'm going to use some different colours again but um, all of these pieces will make a 10 inch block and then you can see here that we've added some uh, 
borders onto that um, and you can really run with it in terms of what you do with the finished blocks. Um, so I'm going to show us the butterfly um, and it's really, really simple. You've got to cut out all of your pieces first. Um, now it's a good idea with a um, heat erasable pen is to mark Do on you there. always have a heat erasable pen on that inside pocket? Uh, <laughs> no where you are, like doing well, the I usually shot, do, but I can't find my heat erasable there. one. My heat erasable one's, oh wait, no, it's in the bottom it's of the there. pocket. Look right. at that. There you, are. <laughs> you just never know when you'll need it. <laughs> and these are magic because um, you can write on the fabric with them and then with heat, they'll disappear. Um, it's always advisable just to test on a scrap of piece of fabric first to make sure it's okay. But um, that's what I've done. I've literally labelled A1, A2, A3 and so on. I'm going to show you a segment of this butterfly. So it um, gives you the measurements for these pieces of fabrics in the pad, does it? Absolutely. Brilliant. And that's the uh, crucial bit. And all I do is just, as you're cutting them, tick them off so you know which bits you've done. Um, and then, you know, you know where you are. It's just being methodical, I suppose, in that part and being organised. Um, and as you can see here, we've got the uh, paper piecing um, panel and they're all corresponding then. So you've got A1, A2, A3, A4. And we're going to have a little look at how to do this intricate heart detail. Now, Joe, this is a bit challenging for me to do on a live situation, but <laughs> I'm going for it. I like a challenge and I'm like, let's do go. it. <laughs> Um, but what's going to aid me is a glue stick. Now, it does recommend using a glue stick. Um, we're going to work on the um, wrong side. So I've flipped that piece of paper over now. So I'm on the reverse side of that. And then your right side of your fabric is going to be placed on top. Now, I can see where that A1 piece is. And all I'm going to do is use a little bit of basting glue. Because these pieces are a little bit too small to use pins, the basting glue is going to really come into its own. And I'm just going to place it over A1 so I know that I've got a quarter inch at least all the way around that square, which I'm just checking now underneath that it is. I could probably go over that way a little bit there. And that's going to be positioned there. And that basting glue is just going to hold it in place to that paper. Now, what I'm going to do is fold the paper over. I'm going to fold the line between A1 and A2. Now, it's only a very short line there, but just go to it and see where it is. You can see it on the reverse because it's almost like tracing paper, which is why it's almost better than it just being regular copier paper right. or something. And I'm just going to fold that completely across. Now, I might have actually eyeballed an exact quarter of an inch. Let's see how good I was. Almost, I've only got like the tiniest bit, but all you do here is just trim off any excess. I'm lining up my quarter inch mark on my ruler to that folded line that we've just made. And a small rotary cutter and um, this equipment is just perfect uh, for this project. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is fold it back and I'm working on that side that I've just cut now. So the pink bit will be the heart and then I'm going to get the piece that says A2 on it and I've chosen to go for a blue and pink theme uh, and I'm just going to line that against it again so I'm going to cover that next shape, that A2 shape and again just get a little bit of basting glue. Now this glue is not a permanent adhesive, it's just going to hold it in place and it'll wash out. Um, you're going to go right sides together on that and just place them together and just have a quick check. Yep, I'm going to cover that little part there. Then all I'm going to do is now on the correct side, uh, so you can see the right side of that paper is, I'm going to pop it under the machine. That basting glue is holding it in place. I'm just going to drop my needle to the line between A1 and A2 at the very end of it. And by dropping my needle first, I'm going to get it in place accurately. He says, let's have a look. There we go, we're in there now. And then I'm going to drop the foot. If you drop the foot first, you might not be exactly on that point. It doesn't okay. matter, but if you can improve your accuracy in this, that's always going to be a bit better. Like it said in the instructions, Joe, I've put uh, my machine stitch length down to 1.2. I'm not going to back stitch at all. We're just going to sew along that little line there. And then I'm going to put my last stitch in where the line ends. Lift up the foot, and then we're just going to uh, trim those edges and I've got these lovely little embroidery uh, scissors here which is really ideal for just trimming those ends 
Um, the reason we don't backstitch is these will all intersect at some point, but we don't want to have a build-up of thread. So what does backstitching do? For, does it make it stronger? Is that yeah, backstitching will basically secure the stitch, and right. you do it a lot in dressmaking at the beginning and end of a seam. Okay. Um, in quilting and patchwork, you don't tend to do it as much um, because you don't want that build-up. We're perhaps using shorter stitches, but yeah, it locks the stitch in. Right, However, okay. we're not worried because we're going to be intersecting all these pieces, so naturally they'll be locked in anyway by right. other pieces um, so we've sewed that tiny little bit on there and I'm just going to give it a finger press but at home if you give it a nice press with the iron um, that'll get a nice um, fold there and it'll keep it nice wonderful so there we are so we've done a1 a2 the next piece we're going to do is a3 all right so I'm going to find the line where a3 is near a2 and I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to fold along that line it's only again a very tiny line but there we go and i fold along it there and then we're going to repeat we can see we've got the blue and the pink fabric there now all i'm going to do is take my rotary cutter again um, and just line up for a quarter inch mark and just trim off every any excess because standard seam allowance really in any patchworking is a quarter of an inch, right. which is what we're following here. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm now going to take my next bit, which is A3. And I'm going to place that bit again so I can see that it's going to cover. I'm just going to get a little bit of basting glue again. You can't have enough of these kind of things. Your heat erasable pens and... Uh, little aids that are going to just help out with um, doing these bits and bobs. Can you cut these? Can you have too much excess when you're doing projects like this? Is uh, it going to make it more tricky if you've got pieces that are actually bigger and you're cutting them down more? Or? I mean, you could, if you cut them bigger, it's not going to be the end of the world right. because we're trimming it down all the time. Okay. And, but these pieces are made so they're quite generous anyway. So mm. they're going to give you more than that quarter of an inch that you need. Um, but yeah, it's just a case of um, making sure that you've got enough. It's better to have too much than too little, I always say, Joe, <laughs> in a number of things in life, not just in sewing. OK, so I'm just again going to put my needle down there. Cool. And then just uh, so these are only very tiny lines. But again, just go slow. If you've got a speed control, which these machines have, you can always slow it right down. So you're taking, you know, the worry out are of you a speedy sewer open. when you're at home uh it depends what i'm doing if i'm doing lots of gathering in dressmaking then i'm the speed sewer but right. generally i like to take my time um because i find it relaxing and also i like to enjoy the process yes absolutely of course i think uh, that's it now lots of you are saying they've never seen foundation paper piecing before in the comments but are very very intrigued uh, mary says i like the way that adam teaches and doesn't rush uh oh, tansy says uh, i've used foundation paper piecing for other sewing techniques in the past but not this it's like iris folding for fabric i love you it you were yes, saying Andy, that this well, morning I see i do know some stuff he knows some this time, stuff adam. he knows this stuff <laughs> So again, we're going to now just fold over it. Once you've got this technique, it's it's so easy. It's just taking your time with it and, you know, not rushing. And yes, I'm not going to lie to you, like with these little smaller pieces, it is a little bit fiddlier. Um, but that's not to say, you know, with the help of a, a glue stick or some basting adhesive, like it's completely possible. It's just the same technique. So don't let it phase you out that the pieces are smaller. OK, so then we're going to take A4. OK, and then again, dab of glue. And you get, I like this because you get into a little bit of a momentum when you get going with it, Joe. Like, it becomes almost a little bit meditative, almost. Yeah, a bit um, like, so I crochet, and crochet I find is yeah. a bit like getting some sort of, or, or brochet, I call it, Adam. Oh, do you? you know, it's like I Latin like that, brochet. Brochet, yeah, do you like that? Oh, I've never heard of brochet, because I knit, I don't crochet, right. um, but I'd love to learn to crochet, so you, you have to give me some brochet lessons. Brochet lessons, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I haven't done anything for ages, I keep meaning to start. But that's a bit like that, you just get going, don't you? It becomes like a little production line almost. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I wanted to show you this heart bit particularly in in the butterfly because it appears quite a bit in the in the designs 
Um, so I thought if we can tackle, and that's the smallest bit. These are the smallest pieces that you'll use throughout all of them. Um, and again, I'm just trimming my thread ends just to, and that's a good habit to get into actually, because right. it just means that, you know, you're keeping everything neat as you go along. Um, and there we go. And I'm, I'm just going to finger press that again, because it's a good quality cotton, it will do that. But if you've got an iron at home, you can uh, give it a press as well. Uh, we do have a selection of cottons on the show for you, actually. Uh, loads of different colours. I'll share them with you shortly. They're on a three for two. Uh, and they're mm. cut by hand fabrics as well. So if you want to order multiples of the half metres, then absolutely you can. And we will cut those uh, for you, which is awesome. I'll share with you, those with you uh, in a little while. Do you know what, Joe? They're so handy to have, even if you've got them in your stash, these solid colours, because there's so much you can do mm. with them, especially when it comes to patchwork and quilting. I love how bright and vibrant they all are as well. Yeah, like, well, if I just show you quickly, because I've got some of this all made up, I have went for a, the blue and pink theme. I've put some lighter blue in there as well. Mm. And when you see the butterfly starting to come together, and it's got the little pink body as well, it just feels really fresh and vibrant yeah. and cool and... Yeah, no, I, I, the colours are really nice. And as well, they're as vibrant as they look on screen, which yes. is really important. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. Um, so there we go. I've just trimmed that again, down, down to the quarter inch. So now it's time to take my next piece. I think the smallest piece within these is an inch by inch square. Um, so it's um, really not that small. Um, it's just taking your time with it. So there we go. I'm going to pop that on there now, right side to right side. Just going to make sure. Did I trim that bit down? Yeah, I did. You can always check as you go along. Wonderful. And that bit's going to go in there now. And again, just under the machine. But what's nice, you do these smaller bits first, and then you start to really see it build. And it's that pleasure that you're taking, like seeing something that you've created. I bet you get that with crochet or, or brochet. I love that you call <laughs> it that. You know, as you see something begin to grow and like, it's really cool, actually. Yeah, I love that these come, uh, the problem is, I think, with a lot. I mean, I think knitting is maybe like, more so like it to a degree. You know, you're, working for some, you're working on something for ages and ages and ages before you start to see like anything happening. I love yeah. with this actually in what, you know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, you're actually starting to see that design come to life already. So if yeah. you're as impatient as I am, <laughs> then you're definitely not going to have to wait too long. You're not long. impatient, Oh, I you? really am. So impatient. <laughs> the worst. Right, so there we go. And it's just re literally repeat, but you, you can see the points of these heart, this heart already, this little heart motif. And I think that's so cute as well, like, that it runs through the, some of the different designs. Uh, A6 is there. Again, just making sure that you're going to be covering that next shape by at least a uh, quarter of an inch all the way around its parameter. Wonderful. And then I'm going to now say in that line, just drop the needle in that. There we are. Oh, no, I'm a little bit overshooting it. There we go. Now, it is an idea, um, if you've got a blunt needle for your machine, for this project, it doesn't matter as much because you, you're going to blunt the needle anyway by sewing through paper, no right. matter how thick or thin it is. So if it is a blunt needle that you've got on the machine, that's OK. Um, it's actually, in some respects, probably a little bit better. Well, I do a lot of projects and you need to have a sharp, nice sharp needle in order to... Start. Yeah, we'd usually say with every project, like, uh, I mean, I don't stick by this, but with every new project, especially yeah. in things like dressmaking, you should change your needle because right. a sharp needle is just going to give a much nicer looking stitch, especially when you're finishing things off when it comes to quilting and doing nice decorative stitches yeah. and stuff. I um, ask all of, our, um, all of our sewers this. When, you, when you're sewing... Uh, yeah. Adam, you've got your pins in. Yeah. Do you take them out as you come to them or sew straight over them? Oh, I never it really sew is, over them. It's my a pin. very divisive. Uh, <laughs> Stuart Hillard sews right over them. Doesn't, doesn't care. I'm going Honestly, to have a word with Mr. He's Hillard. Like, brrr, straight over a lot of them. He doesn't care. The thing is, if you pin at 90 degrees to the seam, yeah. uh, then you're least 
you're less likely to break your machine and you can do it if you go slow but right. I never recommend it and I never teach beginners I teach beginners to make sure that yeah. they're pulling them out as they go it's a real divisive one because I'd say it's about 50 50 everyone I've ever worked with half seem to go straight over and half take them out the thing is sometimes you might I think be doing maybe it something says a lot about people as people as well <laughs> <laughs> can tell what kind of person you are whether you sew your pins or not <laughs> It's a bit like, you know, racing over speed bumps. It's not going to do well for your car, is it? It's not going to do well for your sewing machine no, either. I guess, I guess not. <laughs> uh, it's, splitting the, uh, it's splitting the comments. Oh, never sew over a pin, no, Rachel says. No, exactly. Um, yeah, Suzanne says, uh, I'm so impatient. If something isn't coming together quickly enough, I'm bored. I'm getting better as I get older. Like, my attention span was so short, I couldn't go to a cinema for a little while. So it's too long, too long sitting, um, but I am getting better. We'll get there. Uh, right. Sandy says, I have to agree with Joe. I need something which shows progress. So definitely crochet over knitting. Mm. Yeah. Right, so I'm just going to flip this back over. I'm continuing with this, but as you will see already, and I'm doing this live on air and chatting to you about, what was that, Mexican? Mexicatessen. <laughs> Mexicatessen. Like, it's a deli you know. that sells just Mexican stuff. <laughs> what could you want? But th there's that little intricate heart bit already. Do you know what I mean? Beautiful. And the process is the same throughout. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, this paper piecing technique is allowing you to do something as intricate as that. Uh, and yeah. That looks so effective, like when it's it on the finished block. You could almost, I mean, I love, um, a friend of mine is always making me Adam Beautiful, like, he basically goes to like Primark and all the other cheap shops, he buys yeah. uh, t-shirts and jumpers for me and stuff, and then he just makes really cool patches and sews them all on for me. Like, yeah. you could actually make little patches, couldn't you, with this sort of technique, and actually just oh, sew those yeah. onto an inexpensive sweater. 100%, and, th and I think that's like the nice thing about it, is like, you can be really creative with it. Um, I'm getting on to the, the bigger pieces now. So obviously the bigger the piece, the bigger the, it'll, it'll piece together quicker. Mm. Um, which is why I'd say, if, you, if you're gonna start this, start with the heart be, um, in terms of the big heart shape that was, um, where is it now? On this box here, because um, that is a symmetrical shape. Mm. Um, so once you've done one half, you've you know automatically how to do the other half in reverse but the pieces are bigger so if you're going to start out if you're new to this go with the heart first and then build yourself up but you know i mean that's really inventive look it's a nice box um you can do all sorts with these blocks in the end and i think it's just great um it's um we've really it's really divided the the uh the audience the pin debate the pin debate uh, so suzanne saying i sew over mine <gasps> not no about suzanne it. yeah uh, anita says i've done it both ways depends on how the pins are positioned <gasps> and what i'm sewing there you yeah go. I, I mean sometimes if you're doing i don't know like I come from mainly a dressmaking background so if if i was setting in a sleeve in a garment perhaps and i need a lot of sl I need pins to hold it all in then there might be occasion where I might admit that I've I sewn over a pin. I can see it's always giving you it's always making you quite anxious even talking about <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah you shouldn't at uh, the end of the day you don't want to um, ruin your machine. No absolutely not. Kirstie D says I've done both but I just take the pins out. Uh, Sandy says pins again depends on what I'm working on and which machine I'm using as well. Sandy, check Sandy's out. Sandy's got multiple machines on the go, Adam. You don't want to know how many machines I've got on the go, well, Joe. How many is it? <laughs> are you willing to, are you willing to I don't know whether I dare say on air because if my other half finds out, we're buying a house together and <laughs> oh, no. it is might it be more a problem. Than 10? No, it's not more oh, than 10. Okay. You're right then. It's not more than 10, but it's nearing 10. <laughs> and do you have certain machines for certain jobs? Yeah, so I've got um, an overlocker. Um, where's PSA9? There it is. Um, yeah, I've got an overlocker. Um, I've also got um, a modern domestic machine a little bit. Um, well, this is a domestic machine. And I've got, in fact, it's, there might be a lot of quilters out there. Mm. I've got some vintage machines. Have you? Yeah, uh, vintage Singer machines. Right. There's a machine specifically called a featherweight. Right. And I know they're very popular over in the US. Yeah. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have... And you still use it? Or it's just to look at? No, I use them. Okay. They're, and they're perfect for piecing, actually, because oh, they're, really? they're like a small... It looks like a toy machine, but they're, they're so good. Yeah. Um, but they have a lot of history with them. 
and yeah, no, they're just fantastic. I always, um, it always fascinates me, like vintage sewing machines and how people still use them. Because oh. like, if you had a vintage iPhone, <laughs> let's face it, because there's so much stuff, isn't there? It just is outdated so quickly. Yeah. But it, it blows my mind that sewing machines that are made like years and years and years ago yeah. are still absolutely fit for purpose and as good as doing that job as any other machine out there. They were made to do one thing and most of them will only do a straight stitch. You can get attachments. Like these modern machines are great because you've got your zigzag on there, your decorative stitches and technologies come on. But like because they were made to do that one thing and they're made out of like really strong metals and whatnot, like they're just so brilliant and mine gives such an attractive looking stitch. Um, it's fantastic. But, you know, equally now, the domestic machines that are computerised as well do the same. So, yeah, I mean, you get the idea now. You, you go around and do this. I mean, if I wasn't chatting and going on, I'd be progressing a lot further. But you can see you start to build then the wings. Um, so, yeah, it's That's fantastic. That's really cool. And you see, I'm getting bigger pieces now as well. So I just find this really therapeutic. Like, you know, it's different things to different people, but you know, I quite quite like this. Um, and um, it's all, it's nice when you can do something new and different. As I say, I mainly do a lot of dressmaking. So for me, like venturing out into doing a project like this is really nice. Do you know why? It always it's always amused me, and I've never asked anyone, Adam. Go on. Why? making clothes all the clothes is referred to as dressmaking yeah like you're making a jacket is it is it, is it, is it making jacket, jacket making tailoring are you tailoring or is that still dressmaking uh i mean tailoring really yeah it, it depends on you're using tailoring techniques right um but it I mean, feels like all making of clothes is referred to as dressmaking which yeah sounds strange. it is strange and then it's like what do we call ourselves as people that sew that's a big debate as Sewists, well I reckon. sewist yeah, yeah that's what's become most popular i think but like well, would you be a seam mister a, a seam mister. You're a seam mistress. You'd surely be a seam mister, wouldn't you? A seam mister. I love that. <laughs> it's almost like a de mister. Yeah, <laughs> seam mister. Seam mister. <laughs> I am the seam mister. <laughs> oh. oh my word. What are we like? Eh? I know. What are we like? Uh, Beverly says this is a mesmerising technique with a beautiful outcome. This is new to me. Uh, Anita's letting me know they've got three machines. Check Anita out. Oh um, wow! And Rachel's got one of their has a, a few machines. She's got three and an overlocker. Not sorry about it. Apparently, uh, one of them is a 1950s singer, and it works great. So what? Yeah. 70 years old. That's bonkers. Honestly, isn't it? like I'm on so many Facebook groups with these vintage machines, and it's really inspiring what you can create because they do a lot of these pieces. And they have whole workshops. Um, you know, so if, if you're an owner of one of those singer machines, vintage, perfect project to do on it because right. all you need is straight stitching, perfect. a small stitch. Wonderful. So I'm on piece 11 now. I mean, I have chosen for this demo, like a, one that's got more pieces in it to give you an idea. But you can always go back and watch the wake up call, I suppose, from this morning to see the heart, yeah. which is. And also you, know, you can watch all these shows back at any point. If you're watching this, so you're watching Adam doing it and thinking, well, I would love to get the pad. But I know what it's like, you know, three to five days by the time this arrives. I'll have forgotten all about it and, and what I'm meant to be doing. Don't we come watch our, all of our shows back at any time over on the website. And that's a blessing and a curse, you know, Adam, because it means <laughs> everything is there forever. Um, the, Do you know uh, the, I watch you, right? The differing uh, lockdown uh, weight gains and losses, the lockdown love handles, as I like to call them, uh, the uh, the lockdown locks as well, the COVID haircuts that we had throughout COVID, well, they're all there <laughs> in full glory still to be watched back. <laughs> The lockdown love handles. Yes, exactly. You never had lockdown we, love oh, handles. Oh, we did. Uh, we all, we definitely, definitely did. I definitely did anyway. That's for sure. <laughs> They're on their way back as well. No. <laughs> hey, listen, if you can't enjoy yourself, then what's the point? <laughs> That's why I always go, like, I've got a friend that ums and ahs. Are you one of these people that just can eat and eat and eat and eat? And then... Uh, and then I, 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 yeah, yeah, I... Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but having said that, I'm really naughty. I, I never have breakfast. Um, I just can't stomach it in the morning. I was, we were talking with Jan about this earlier on, actually. Right. I just can't do it. Um, but yeah, I, I try and be good with my food. I do eat healthily. Right. It's only now and again I'll not. Um, 
I, I generally don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I see. I enjoy a salad. Do you uh, like a salad, Joe? Uh, potato salad. <laughs> 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 Nicola's messaging, she said we should do a podcast and we should call it Brochet Adam. Do you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. That I think that's amazing a, would I think that it's a be? stiffing idea. Do you know what? Like, I'm in awe of anybody that takes up a, an art form, whatever it might be, uh, particularly obviously got an invested interest in crafting. What would it, I mean, what would it be about other than sewing, uh, um, um, crochet and knitting, um, uh, RuPaul's it, Drag Race, yeah. Eurovision, uh, yeah. Oh, are you your Eurovision fan, are you? Oh, I'm the biggest Eurovision fan. Yeah. Oh, are you? I've been. Are we going to host it next year? We are going to. I thought I'd seen that. We are going to host it. Probably. But well, I live in central Manchester, and it could be in Manchester. <gasps> I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be Glasgow. Yes, I have already booked my hotel for both <laughs> weeks that it could oh, be on. You are a super fan. I aren't am you? a super fan. Yeah. Well, I, I, I went to quite a lot of them. We, I've, I haven't really been to that many in recent years, obviously, because uh, everything that's been going on. But I will definitely be there next year without a shadow of a doubt. Well, are you a um, fan? Uh, I yeah. If I'm around, I was, I'm not a huge, huge mega oh. fan. Um, I do enjoy it. I enjoy if you have a Eurovision party, are people allowed to talk? Uh, do you know I've never been to a Eurovision party. Oh, there party. you go, that's right. Um, people find it very strange that I organise parties and then make everyone be quiet for the entirety of it, not talk. Oh, oh, is that because you want to be... Yeah, oh. absolutely. <laughs> in on the, well, shall I tell you something? I've got a friend that I was on the sewing bee with. Oh, right. And uh, he tailored Rylan Clark's jacket for Eurovision this did year. Did he? He did. Wowzers. Yeah, that was uh, really uh, interesting. I went down to help him with a few projects as well. Raph, nice. hello, Raph, if you might be watching. Oh, He's a great that's guy. That's amazing. I love those kind of stories. Yeah. Um, uh, don't ask Joe about salad, says Tansy Pants. He is somewhere between there and Chiltern. No, I found it. It was, it was, it was fine. The salad was actually on the side at home, Adam. Oh. Very, very warm and very sweaty. I ate it nonetheless, obviously. <laughs> if you told them I would give you a fright last night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I, well, I'm going to save it for the second half of this show. All <laughs> oh, right, yeah. okay. Uh, but... um, Adam definitely saw the lockdown love handles in all their <laughs> <last night. laughs> than he Got more than he bargained for uh, when he got to the house. I'll tell you about that shortly. <laughs> uh, we do laugh, we do laugh. <laughs> So I'm just going to finish sewing this bit, but then I've got these pieces already made up. So I'm going to show you the process in terms of what happens next, if you like, once you've got your block sorted. Um, and as you can see, it's quite repetitive, but that's what, that's what makes it easy in a way, is that, you know, you're sorting it all out and you get all these lovely bits. So um, there's four quadrants to the butterfly. Um, as I say, like, go with the heart shape one I showed you earlier, if you're just starting out in this. Um, but what you'll end up with, if we use this piece, um, once you've pieced all the bits together around the outside, is one of the butterfly's wings right. and the heart there as well. Um, then all you'll do, you've got all these bits that are fanning out around the edge. And I think that actually looks quite decorative. You could be quite creative I and like do something it. like with that. But um, to create the block, what we're going to do is just trim all of these off. Now, we've got a really solid line around the outside of this section of the block, and then there's a dotted line. The dotted line is where you cut the paper to initially from the pad. Right. And the, core, uh, and the solid line is um, the sewing line, basically. So between the solid line and the dotted line is a quarter of an inch. And we need to leave that quarter of an inch of seam allowance for when we sew them all together. So all I'm going to do is line up um, my ruler at the quarter inch mark along that bold line uh, because what that's going to do is make sure that I trim flush to the paper and also give me a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. So I just chop that there and then we do the same on this side. This is quite an interesting piece because it's angled. The heart is two rectangles which is why I'm saying it's easier to start with that one but once you've got the technique you can take on anything get as creative as you want with all of these different designs and you get four of each uh, design so four pieces of 
paper to make four of them. So and do you need multiple pieces of paper for each project or is that is does is 26 does 24 sheets indicate 24 different finished panels or is that not the way it works uh yeah so six designs and four sheets of each design so yeah six by four is 24. so you yeah. make 24 finished panels yes like exactly That's excellent, isn't it it is and you think each one of those is 10 inches so yeah. you know quite easily you can make up something fantastic yeah um, so you're looking at just over a pound a project then which is amazing value it, really it is, is really i mean and if you look at this one that's the butterflies this is you know how many butterflies is this going to have been one two three four and then we've added some bits in as well but you can kind of see the size of that and mm. how beautiful it looks in the different colors and that's just using those four so if you used all the butterflies up and then added obviously your borders that's what you'd end up with and we've got some lovely straight line quilting on here as well which gives it that extra bit of texture um, and i think with those bright plain colors those basic colors with that lovely border on there it's, it's just beautiful it's really you know and i could see that kind of thing whether it's you know for a newborn's bedroom or whether you know you wanted a nice uh, quilt or some wall hangings for your sewing room like there's so much you can make out of this so incorporate it in different projects the panels so there we go um we've done that one and all you do i've actually done it i've prepared myself joe <laughs> is you'll then chop all of those segments down exactly as i've just shown you and then it's a simply then a case of going piece a to piece b that's piece c this will be piece b i think perfect all right and then you just need to have a little look you're going to go right side to right side and just orientate myself now with the butterfly so that's that there and that's that there perfect so they're gonna go there wonderful and then you'll see that th that'll be then the the next wing um, which is really cool now at this stage i would recommend pinning or even if you've got some of those clips you can use those as well um, and just line them up and i'd keep the paper in them at this stage because that paper will tear away eventually, but you want to leave it on for as long as you can. So it keeps everything nice and stable for when you're piecing all of these together. And do you see, I'm just pinning at 90 degrees to where the seam's going to be. Um, and that's if, in case I did run over a pin, it'd be far better than it being that way and getting stuck in the machine. But what I'm going to do is take it to the machine now with that lined up and I'm going to be sewing along that bold line, which we said earlier was the quarter inch um, seam allowance. See, you've got your machine on a mat. I don't know if I've seen that before. Do you know why I like it? Because if I, I can move it. Ah. And do you know, we can talk about that later. I made that with the builder block square. Oh, wow. Um, really just cool. out of some scraps of fabric that I'd got. Um, do you always have your machine on a mat? Yeah, and I tend to put it on the machine bed as well, particularly on my older machines, yeah. because it means I can release the foot. So with the foot down, it releases the spring. So there's not tension on it all the time. Right. And also um, it protects the feed dogs underneath from ah. the foot. So it, it keeps fabric between it yeah. when, I'm, when I'm storing it. That's as amazing. Well. Uh, yeah, like a little machine bed quilt. In fact, you could make one of them out of this. Yeah, absolutely. You could make it, quilt it. Be fabulous. Took my pin out, didn't sew over it, Joe. <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> um, but all you're doing is so clear because you're just following that line um, straight the way along. Take your pin out, carry on. And it's, um, you've not even got to look at the throat plate or use a quarter inch foot for this because the lines are already there. As long as you've lined everything up. Plate? The throat plate is basically um, the metal bit on the machine. Oh, OK. And on there, you'll have some markings that tell you um, in metric and imperial um, seam allowances. So right. it might be a quarter inch. It might be three eighths of an inch, okay. five eighths. Or if we're talking metric, three eighths would be a centimetre. Five eighths would be a centimetre and a half. Right, OK. I work in both. But I have to I learn to... Do, I can't do... Um... I have to do kilos and grams. 
I can't do pounds and ounces. Yeah. But I'm definitely working inches, not in centimetres. Really? It's so interesting, bit, isn't bit it? Because yeah. I think here in the UK, we do tend to be a bit of, a bit well, of both. Well, in craft, it would always be inches. Yeah. But then if it was like a measurement in distance, if I was measuring like a room, mm. I, it would have to be metres. It's very strange. I feel like... Um, I, I certainly am in that age where we've sort of had a bit of both. Yeah. Like there was a bit of the old way and a bit of the new way, so we're just a bit mixed. Yeah. I think I'm a bit more like that as well. I mean, I'm, I've just passed my 30s. <laughs> well, I'm nearly <laughs> between 30 and 40 now. Oh, that's where I am. I'm 36, oh. uh, 36 at the end of September. I'm not happy about it. Uh, why? It's just a number. I guess it's just a you number don't. slightly larger than the number I would like. <laughs> <laughs> if it's just a number, why can't I just have a slightly smaller one? <laughs> <laughs> Is it funny though, like, do you, you won't feel that age in your head, or do you? No, I don't, I don't think I feel any age. I mean, I still feel ready to go and party all the time. I think I'm 18 still. Oh yeah, well it doesn't stop me doing that, absolutely. I was uh, at a wedding last I'm weekend. I'm definitely going to be a, a wrinkly raver when I'm in like my 70s. A what? A wrinkly raver. Oh, honestly, you're, you're in education with brochet, a wrinkly raver. Yeah. Oh, I love I mean, it. I just came back from Glastonbury, so I think I'm still, I'm still channeling, still holding on to my youth, definitely. <laughs> you see now this uh, butterfly's really taking shape. I love it. <laughs> cool. And then we're just going to go on. So, so you see, once you've got the pieces made, this is really, really the easy bit. Um, and just lining them up. But this um, butterfly is going to be really cute. And the uh, tulip, I've started the tulip as well, and that's just fantastic. So you could choose to do a big mix of all of these designs, Joe, or you could just go with the butterflies like we showed you on that little runner there. Um, Suzanne, uh, Susan Dawn, uh, I think she's been sort of, she's just, uh, she's been, she knows, she knows, she knows that, let me try that again. She knows, she knows you from somewhere, Adam. She just put, oh my, I've just realised Adam was on the Great British Society. <laughs> she says, is he from Leicester? I can't remember, I'm from yeah. Leicester. If he isn't, then just ignore this comment. No, I am from Leicester. You are from Leicester. Yes. Hello, Susan. There you are. Um, yeah, I am Which from Leicester. Which season was it, Adam? Uh, well, I'm old news now. It was season seven. Um, is that what you asked me? Sorry? What did you ask? What yeah, was the question? Yeah, I did ask you what season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On. Yeah, season seven. So it wasn't this one just gone, it was the one before. Did, it, did you film in some of it in Manchester? Uh, no, this, this year they filmed in Leeds. Right. We filmed down in London, but we're in a big bubble because of uh, oh, COVID. The Cove. The, the Cove. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, right exactly. Buzzkill, that wasn't it. Yeah, it was an ordeal, wasn't it? Um, now with a nice press, look at that. I love just those colours and everything just go so nicely together. Just beautiful. I love the fact that it all comes together so quickly. I mean, you've done most a lot of that, all the intricate elements of that anyway, from start yeah. to finish, right there, haven't you? Yeah, I would say a block would take you. How long did it take me? I could get a block done in in an hour or probably less. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, but you know, I'm I'm used to the technique. Start with the heart, get the technique in your head, and then progress to the more intricate ones. But you'll find that you just get in a rhythm and you can do them really quickly, and you end up with a stunning result that looks so professional. Yeah. Um, you know, people are going to be impressed with that. Yeah, it really is it cool. Uh, actually, our social media superstar, Rachel, is also from Leicester oh, as well. There you are. Everyone's uh, in Leicester. I used to live in Peterborough, so Leicester was like my nearest, oh, did you? nearest big, big, yeah. big, I would say big town with shops. I mean, big night out is what I mean, Adam. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I used to go there quite a lot. Oh, uh, there you go. And Lorraine says, we're never too old to rave, Joe, apparently. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, I'm subscribing to that 100%. <laughs> Our letter says, uh, that's really pretty, it is. Um, Tansy Pounds, I'm thinking that if you had old bedding, this would be a good way to recycle it into a completely new set. 
perfect or any off cuts or anything. Do you know what I mean? I'd still go for buying some of these solids because mm. you could mix all of that in. I think that's the beauty of patchwork is that you can go really scrappy patchwork on it and do lots of different things. So you can use bold choices of colour for these pictorial designs. But yeah, it would be an absolute perfect project for recycling and, and everything else. Yeah. It would. I'll just show you some of the uh, other um, finished items that I've got here as well. So think about how you're going to incorporate into other things. Yes, they make a beautiful decorative panel. How about a stocking? Oh. That would be great with your little robin on there. Uh, what's this one here? We've got a lovely uh, cushion here. Uh, with four different blocks on that's very colorful and eclectic that one isn't it uh let's have a look what else you've got here oh this is cool uh a little oh, what is this is it for no, a horse that's a sewing I don't think machine it's... cover oh it's a sewing machine cover yeah i was wondering i thought it was a tabard for a moment but it's obviously not <laughs> a tabard uh, with no head hole <laughs> yeah, exactly um uh, there you go, so it's sewing machine cover is what you've got there, or a cover for a pummel horse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you've got those, so really beautiful things you're going to be able to make with these. And again, remember how this all comes to you, so very, very simple. I love the fact that it's in um, a pad as well, because sometimes, especially when you've got thinner patterns like this, it can be really difficult when they come like in a pack or they're folded. Yeah. So brilliant that they're in the 12 by 12 sizing. And you've got the instructions in there alongside them too. Really brilliant value. I know you're going to absolutely adore it. Maybe you're someone that has not tried quilting before. I think a lot of the time, especially if you are a dressmaker, um, to, to go and do regular patchwork quilting, sometimes a bit of a leap with all the cutting, um, or maybe you think you have to have dyes to do it. I think with this, it would be a really great crossover project from one style of sewing uh, into another. So definitely grab those and give it a go. The other thing you might want to go for with them is of course the fabric of the week. Really brilliant uh, selection of colours here. Uh, that is per half metre. Now the great thing is, with buying fabrics from a Serial Crafters Companion, we do cut these by hand. So if you're ordering multiples of one, maybe you want to do bigger projects, you've got the ability to do that. They're on a three for two, they're 4.99 or 6.25. I'll take you through the colours you've got then. So you've got the coral, which is this one here. And then we also have the Merlot. This one here is my favourite, I think, that one, the powder pink. This one is your glorious green. Then we've got the grass green. This one here is sea foam. Sea foam is one of those colours, isn't it? If someone said to you, what does sea foam look like? You'd be like, I have no idea. <laughs> Depends. In Margate, it's a kind of brown colour. <laughs> in Barbados, <laughs> it's kind of this colour. Uh, <laughs> then you've got this one here. This is your hot pink. The flamingo pink, I, uh, I mean, a lovely, lovely colour. And the ballerina, uh, you've got sort of uh, that, you've got three different pinks in here. They're all gorgeous. And you've got a brilliant blue in here too. Really lovely to have these sort of um, prime colours, these sort of really nice big bold colours for you that you're going to be able to create awesome projects with. Next up, we are going to have a little look at the embroidery kit. Again, something that... Um, Lots of my friends seem to have recently have gotten into embroidery. Em embroidery? Embroidery. Uh, there's an amazing woman that lives near me in Manchester. She's called Hoop and Thread. And what yeah. she does is she goes out. It's quite an industrial part of... Um, they're all kind of like Victorian mills in the area of Manchester where I live. Um, and she goes out and she takes photos of these old industrial buildings and then she turns them into embroideries. So amazing. clever. So they're like pictures which she's transferred into embroidery. And really, really... Um, Blows my mind. Yeah, Hoop and Thread, her name is on uh, wow. Instagram. Go and check her out. Uh, we've got a brilliant kit for embroidery. If you wanted to give it a go, maybe you want to get started with it, uh, you're going to get in here the embroidery kit itself, uh, which has got pretty much everything in there you need to get going, including the hoop and all the other bits that you might need. We've got some uh, threads in here, and you've also got some embroidery scissors too. Uh, a brilliant little gift idea. Not going to break the bank this. 12 99 or 1796. We're going to go into uh, a demo on this, I believe, in just a moment. But before that, uh, I want to share with you the uh, hunky dory items that we've got on the show uh, for you today. So let's have a little look at those. The ultimate set, which is this one uh, just here, I'll show you exactly what you're getting in that. Um, it's been very busy on this already. Uh, I'm right in thinking a third of the stock has gone here. We are going to come back. Uh, right, uh, let's take a quick break then, shall we, in that case. 
um, and give you a chance to check out your baskets. Very busy uh, over on the website. So whilst you check out your baskets, let's share with you all the details of US delivery. Take a look. We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Make your die cutting tools last as long as your love for crafting with the Gemini Accessories Clear Cutting Plates. Your metal dies are put under lots of pressure with each pass through your Gemini die cutting machine. So to make sure they cut crisp, clean, delicate designs for years to come, you need to look after your dies. And that's where the Gemini Accessories Clear Cutting Plates come in. Quick buy, get yours now. You heard the lady, get yours right now. Uh, right, what you might need to get your hands on right now is those hunky-dory items. So let's share with you uh, the product we were looking at this morning. It's a 2022 Christmas Ultimate set. Now, you've got four different topper and paper collections in here. You've got the crafting magazine, you've got the little book, you've got all of the inserts in there, and you've also got the adorable scoreable. No crack in your crease. Uh, 67.99 or 97.99 if you want to get all of this. Is it a third of the stock gone on this particular collection? A third of the stock has gone here uh, on this. 54.39 or 78.39 is your platinum price. If you want to see more from Hunky Dory, you've got just over an hour to wait. Uh, Natalie will be back with us uh, and we'll be going back through all the items that are available. You're in luck at the minute because everything is still there. Right, let's come back then. Let's have a look at Builder Block of the Week, which is this one. Uh, just here. Builder Block's so amazing because of course, uh, it's a die cutting system for your patchwork because let's face it, the cutting out is not the bit that people enjoy, apparently, Adam. It's the, it's the sewing, the, the, the putting together, the configuring, the picking the fabrics. Is it fair to say that it's a chore, the cutting out? Yeah, cutting out can be a little bit of a nightmare. and It's not the mo part I most enjoy, but that's why these make it so enjoyable, because it gets all of that out of the way. And I've realised now why a lot of quilters quilt. You end up spending more time at the sewing machine, which is what we all want. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, indeed. So uh, three different options for you here, then. Let's uh, go with, should we share with you the squares first? That's the one that's on uh, your screen just here. £20 or $30, you are saving... Uh, £10 or $15, which is not to be sniffed at. Uh, the other one then we have is the half square triangles, which are these ones. We've also got those available for you. Uh, all the same price on these, uh, which is of course £20 or $30. Or you can go for the quarter square triangles. It's the best ever price on these. Platinum members, I know, it's getting silly, isn't it? £16 or $24. Remember, you're going to get double points across absolutely everything. Uh, and of course, uh, we will be picking a winner. I want to keep calling it the naughty list to go onto the nice list. Uh, at the end of this show as well. But I know Adam's raring to share these with us. Um, it seems like just it dies for cutting fabrics, just feels like it's something that we should have been doing ages ago, doesn't it? Like the precision oh. that it offers you. Absolutely, and especially when it comes to patchwork and quilting, is that you need that precision. 
Um, but the brilliant thing about these dies is it does it for you. Uh, and paired with the Gemini machine, it is a godsend as a crafter. Um, so absolutely, they're a worthwhile investment. And it's amazing, like these are some quite simple shapes that we've got on the show today, but they complement the other shapes in the Builder Block series. Um, but even with the simpler shapes, you can create some stunning visuals um, with your fabric choices. And as you can see here, with this gorgeous quilt, we've got the quarters, um, that's it's stunning, isn't it? Quarter square triangles paired with the half triangles. And just with the use of some colour, um, it, it just looks fabulous. And it looks so modern and fresh. And I love geometric shapes anyway. And the fact that this is all geometric just feels really current and modern um, and brings quilting, I think, into the 21st century. It looks century. like it's been beautifully put together as well. It, it has. looks very precise. Exactly. But do you know what? I'm going to tell you a little trick now. Um, the combination of your, ha your half square triangle and your quarter squares makes it a little bit easier when you're making that block up because you've not actually got to match anything in the center there. Whilst if you had four quarter square triangles you've got to really match ah, the inside it's not difficult to do as long as you keep a quarter an inch but by placing a half square triangle there what you're actually emitting is that hard part of matching it's quite clever really um of course you have got some matching here where those uh triangles do meet and where your squares meet but once you've got them made up into squares it's it's a lot simpler and easier but yeah no i love it and i love these dice and i'm gonna show you how to put it through the gemini and uh make some interesting features and designs really fabulous uh, lots of people chatting away carol says it is good to see another technique for sewing i love the designs lorraine says the deals are just too good to pass aren't they aren't they lorraine i mean they really are it would be rude not to buy how rude mm -hmm. uh, hannah law says value on the builder block dies is incredible i've been using them since they were launched nice to see them in these kind of try me sizes as well i know we do the sort of big builder block systems which are Definitely worth the money, but more of a considered purchase. I mean, you really can just dip your toe in with these. Maybe yeah. if you're a paper crafter and you'll be crossing over into fabric dice for the first time, there's not really going to be a better, more affordable time to do so, I would say. Absolutely. And I think as well, so many of these techniques would cross over. You could do some really nice little simple squares mm. in fabric that could perhaps go on the front of a card yeah. or like transfer over. I think, you know, that's the beauty with the multimedia dies. But you're right, Joe, if you're just dipping your toe in, these simple shapes would get you started and then you know they're going to complement the other builder blocks and systems if you decide to dip your toe yeah. in a little bit deeper. Um, so I've already pre-cut some squares, triangles, etc. But I want to show you exactly how it works um, in terms of doing it with the Gemini machine. So I've got my dies here. They come in different sizes, actually. You've got one and a half, two inch, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. And that's the size as those dies are. Um, you've got to take into account your seam allowance. Well, the best thing is the seam allowance is included in these dies. So you're going to you know have, you, the maths is taken out for you okay. as long as you use so well i was going to maybe ask what is probably a silly question then because with a half square triangle yeah can't you just cut that in half and make that a quarter square triangle uh yeah no you can't do that really because you've got to if you're cutting it in half you've got to always account for your seam allowance uh, okay um i mean to be honest it probably accounted in if you were to do that You've just got to be careful then what you're piecing it to. Right. Um, so it definitely makes definitely you would definitely want to own the quarter and the half yes, square triangles. Absolutely. And the great thing as well, um, I can probably show you on some pieces that I've cut already. When you cut traditionally with a rotary cutter, let's get a dark blue so, or pink even so we can see it on the camera, is um, you would cut a square or a triangle or whatever, but then at the end you've got to trim it all off, a little bit like we were doing with the FPP. Mm. Um, it's all thought about with these dies because they're angled at the ends in such a way where that trimming off is omitted. It's another step that you don't have to do, uh, which is fantastic. Um, it's less cutting out, more sewing, basically, um, because of the way those dies are shaped. But yeah, I'd say absolutely, you know, have as many as you, as you can. Um, so I'm just going to take some fabric. And the great thing is, as well, you can cut a selection at one time. Now, we recommend with the Gemini machine that we're actually cutting um, 
up to six layers of cotton. Now, depending on your cotton, it might be that you can cut a little bit more than that. Um, I'm just going to grab myself some shears or some scissors. There we go. So I can just cut this to size. Um, but once it's in the machine, you're going to be able to cut multiples and it's going to allow you to actually then start to piece together a quilt, say, a lot quicker. Um, so I'm going to play it cool for this one and do, yeah, one, two, three. This is four layers, but, you know, it can even do more than six if you wanted it to. I'm just going to cut this fabric all the way down there. And what you do at home is give your fabric a nice little press beforehand. Um, there we go. All right. OK, and then all we're going to do, we've got these plates for the machine. Now, I really strongly recommend, Joe, if you're going to be using to, the multimedia dies to cut fabric, to invest in these plates. Yeah, they the are machine. fabulous, aren't they? They're the fabric plates and they just, they're a little bit more hardware and they're going to last a lot longer. Um, so I've got my plastic one on the bottom and then I've got plate A. Plate A is slightly thicker than plate B. So we say to have that on the bottom. But if you get that the wrong way around, it doesn't really matter. Then we're going to put a fabric on there and then we're going to put the dies in place. Now this is my half square triangle and you want to want to be economic with your fabric as much as you possible. You want to save as much and you can feel where the um, ridges, the, the bit that's going to cut into the fabric. So make sure that's face down onto the fabric. And then I'm going to put my quarter square triangle in there as well. And these are all complementary sizes. And then I'll show us how we can start to sew them together as well. And I'm going to put my square in there. OK. Now, if you're working with a bit smaller fabric, whatever, there's nothing wrong with taping these corners down if you needed to. But generally, you should be OK. And then you're going to put your plate B on top and then your plastic one there. And then it's as simple as putting it through the machine and it's going to cut all those shapes for me, he says, as he does it live on air. And it just takes, um, the machine just takes it through, exerts the pressure. Because I imagine then you'd have to, if that's six layers you're doing, you'd have to, would you, how many layers of fabric could you cut by hand at the same time? Oh gosh, you'd be struggling with six. Right, okay. Yeah. So if we said three then, for argument's sake. Yeah, I You've mean, got three different shapes, you're cutting three of each. You, that's like six times you've got to sit there and measure that out and, and yeah. with a rotary cutter. Exactly. I mean, if you think you cut on the fold quite often with cotton, so that'd be two layers. You could probably, you know, do four layers. Anything above that with right. a pair of shears, you're not going to be accurate. And what happens with scissors when you're cutting uh, or even with a rotary cutter is it won't go all the way through and then it won't be accurate you'll get it fraying off um, or with scissors you'll end up with the fabric splaying uh. um, so they won't be the right size whilst this because it's ex the dies on top and it's exerting the pressure on the top it's giving you an accurate cut each and every time and this is the magic bit you can literally just see look I mean that was four layers but I could you know, we recommend up to six, but it could probably be more seen, than that. I've seen eight or ten done before. And there you go. You've got your shapes there, which is fantastic. How easy is that? Really simple. Um, and, you know, the machine's made so that, you know, it'll only take what's supposed to go in it. Um, so you don't have to worry, you know, with this. If I put my hand in there, it won't because it's got a sensor. Mm. Um, but the fabric plates are definitely worth the investment for cutting the fabric which is those A and yeah, B plates. Yeah, uh, Ruth actually is asking what those plates are called. They are uh, the Gemini plates for fabric. We do them in yeah. uh, the mini, uh, we do them, sorry, in the Gemini junior size, and we also do them in the original size. I think they are in the pro size as well, but you'll find them over on the website is where you'll find them, so go and search for them. I don't know if they're in stock. We'll get someone to have a little look, see if they are in stock at the moment over on the website. Fabulous. So I think that I cut out the three and a half inch sizes here, but you can now quite easily see that, you know, they all start to coordinate together in terms of size. These are all going to work together fabulously. So um, once they're all sewn up with the seam allowances. So that's, again, what takes the headache out of it. We'll go, right, we'll go the same size in each block, and then we know we're going to be able to piece them together to create something nice. Um, so that's how you'd cut them. And I mean, you can cut a wide variety of materials and fabric on there. You could do faux leather um, if you were going into bag making, perhaps. Um, or, you know, you, could, you can cut 
um, a wide variety of material on there. Um, here you can see, oh, this is just me messing around really quickly, but I was putting together some half triangles and some squares and just see, you know, what I could kind of do. Um, and I'm going to show you how to piece them together now, which is the, the nice bit because you're at the sewing machine. So we're going to take the theory really from that um, quilt that we've just seen, right. um, which is the two quarter triangles and the half square triangle as well and I've got some pieces cut up here and you can vary the colours so um, let's go because I was thinking quite a geometric thing again once you've got your fabric made up this could then quite easily be um, anything it could be the pocket on um, on, a, on one of our bag systems or it could be um, anything really that, uh, on one of the caddies that you've got like it'd be perfect to a pocket on there or you, maybe you could make like a um a case for something like an I, uh, ipad case would be good um my foot's come off my machine <laughs> Let's, it's all right it's nothing that i can't rectify i don't think yeah yes Yeah, because you're always throwing it in the bottom of your suitcase or you're taking it to the beach. You use a little like drum bag or something you could slip, slot it into with a little zip on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely winning. I think that's, uh, I think they're an underutilised bag, Adam. Yeah, and do you know what? Zippy bags, cases or yeah, like perfect, yeah, for a speaker for the, for the beach. Um, you know, to protect those things. And you can, the beauty of is you're making your own fabric when you patchwork. Like this was one, this is just a basic zippy bag that I'd done from, I think it was forest something fabric from yourselves. And this was done with half square triangles and then quilted. Oh, um, nice. But all it is, and I'd put some um, wadding in there as well. Um, but I use it for all sorts of things just to, you know, I might put my um, rotary cutter in there and my scissors or some of my sewing bits. But that was made using this system. Um, yeah. And then I just use some plain fabric on the back and plain on the inside and inserted a zip. I love it. But you can be so creative and that's just a simple, you know, I've made rectangles, sewn them together, put a zip in. Um, but I think that's it the best way to keep it It looks very symmetrical, Adam. What? It looks very symmetrical. Oh, I suppose it is. Do you, I do <laughs> like asymmetrical things, but I think when it comes to shapes like this, yeah. symmetrical is the way it's to It's like go. when you go for like small blocks like that that are all very symmetrical, does it kind of leave you nowhere to hide when it comes to your quilting? Yeah, I think with quilting, you've either got to go full on scrappy yeah. and just go for it and put anything anywhere, or you, you go for a methodical, right. like, this is what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, but ha have fun. I think that's the most important thing. You've got to have fun. Um, this is still not tight enough. Yeah, so um, we're going to... Sorry, I'm just tightening the... I've got a screw loose. <laughs> which hey. is something I've known for a long while, Joe. Uh, uh, it's a miracle I haven't got a screw loose there. I must tell you what happened last night. <laughs> yeah, go on. I my, like my life flashed before my eyes oh, last night oh. at the house. Uh, so I was eating, I got to, I went to bed quite early, about 10, 10.30, which is early for me. And I thought to myself, before I went up, is anyone else coming to the house tonight, which will be coming tomorrow? I thought, no, and definitely no one is. I thought, Adam will definitely come up. Uh, in the morning, I just thought, I just thought to myself, there's no one coming. So anyway, I went up to bed. So I'm on the, in the attic space. So you've got the ground floor, the middle floor, and then the attic space. And if I'm on my own in the house, because I'm quite deaf, I always leave the do bedroom door open upstairs. So I could hear if anyone came in and out. It got to about quarter past midnight. I was sort of asleep, sort of awake, and I was convinced that the front door had gone. And I was like, oh no, someone's broken in. I'm going to get murdered. It was what I was thinking. And then I just sort of laid there very quietly, hoping that, you know, maybe I just imagined it. Maybe it's fine. And there was no, there wasn't any really any movement or anything. So I thought, no, maybe I've imagined it. I thought I better go downstairs and just check anyway. So I turned the first landing light on. It's just me in my underwear at this point, by the way. <laughs> so I'm like, first landing, then I crept down onto the second landing, put the light on, still no sign of anything. I knew I'd left a small light on in the kitchen. So at that point, I thought, I looked downstairs and I thought, no, it's fine, just go back to bed, just go back to bed. And I thought, no, I better check the front door. <gasps> Went to the front door, opened it, the front door was open. <gasps> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so at that point I thought, well, there's still, no, still not a lot of noise coming from anywhere. I thought, I'm going to have to check now and see if there's anyone in the living room, aren't I? 
Well, I put my head round the corner in the living room. That's when I saw a strange bearded man stood in the living in the lounge space. And I kid you not, I I must have jumped a good three or four foot. Do you reckon? It was like a proper like ah, like uh, completely out of the way. It was very butch, wasn't it? <laughs> Extremely, Joe. We'll let them believe that bit. Oh, it was an absolute scream. <laughs> I don't know what I thought was going on, and then within about sort of four seconds, three or four seconds, I realised it was Adam. I yeah. Felt so bad. Start, I really I've bad. never met a colleague for the first time and gone, let me just go upstairs and put some clothes on, I'll come back down. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it did. And then, uh, yeah, definitely gave me a fright, Adam. I'm so sorry. That's I do all still right. feel so bad because I've never seen somebody jump so high in the air. With... <laughs> I did actually, You know when people say they jumped? I didn't realise that when you properly jump, like you do actually jump yeah. off the floor. Yeah, it is a thing, isn't it? It definitely, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely quite funny. But then also, once the sort of uh, fear subsided, as I was running up the stairs to get a jumper, I couldn't stop laughing. Then I just sort of really got the giggles afterwards. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt awful because I'd arrived late and I was like, oh, no. I'm oh, no, to... I'm, always, I'm always arriving in the middle of the night, absolutely. <laughs> so all I'm doing here is like just making up some squares, basically. What you need on your machine, if you haven't got it, and your machine might have come with it already, is a um, quarter inch foot. And what that looks like is your standard foot, but it's got a little prong on, this, on the end of it. Um, and that's a guide. It's a metal guide, really. So you can literally run your fabric right up against it and you'll know that you've got a true quarter of an inch. I can't find the one for my machine today, um, but what we're going to do is sew all of these pieces together at a quarter of an inch. So you've got your quarter uh, square triangles um, cut here. Uh, let's do a pink and a dark blue, why not? Yeah. Okay, and you're just going to match them up. All right. And because you've used the Gemini machine, it's taking all of that hassle out of um, making sure that they're accurate, because you know they're accurate. You've got a nice cut on that. Okay, and then I'm just going to line that up there. And then we're just going to sew. Now again, Joe, I don't backstitch when I'm doing this. Some people do, um, but all of these um, seams are going to interlock, which will lock the stitches in anyway, because we're piecing it together. Um, but you can do if you want. You've just got to be careful that if you do backstitch, that you're not then going outside of that seam allowance. Right, okay. Because if you do, then you're going past that quarter inch. Right. And then you're not going to end up with the accuracy that you want. But you see, just sewing together, how effective is this? If you, if you pick some colours, I've just realised I've gone with the colours that I'd gone with in the butterfly. I'm drawn to these <laughs> colours. Ah, they're your colours, really. What is it, the sea foam? Then there was, I can't remember what the blue and the, and the, hot, the hot pink. They, they look really good together. Um, and then, I mean, I'm just going to finger press these, but basically, you know, you could give them a nice press with an iron. And again, it's always good just to trim your threads as you go in. Um, but like I say, you can create your own fabric with this. If you want to introduce pattern fabric, like go full on scrappy, do it. Do you know what I mean? And then the beauty of doing it yourself is you can then create your own binding, um, which could finish a quill or, you know, be, be a feature on whatever it is you're making. Uh, Mary Pat's in the comments. She said she uh, bought some builder blocks recently. Uh, I need to play with them. First, I need to name my machines. Have your machines? Is this a thing, naming machines? Yeah. Have you all got names? My have you older got names? ones have, yeah. What are they called? Uh, one's called Betty. Right. Um, what's my other one called? Bertha is, is um, my 201. Um, I tend to stick with bees. I kind of stopped them, but I've definitely got... Oh, and Black Beauty, because all the old singer machines are that lovely, glorious black. Right, okay. With the gold uh, decals on them. So, yeah, it is a little There you bit. go. Bertha, you Betty and cars? Black Beauty. Sometimes, sometimes um, I had a, I had a Citroen, it was very, it was as classy as it sounds, um, yeah, a Citroen Saxo Desire. Oh. Uh, and that obviously was called, that. that was called Desiree, obviously. Because oh, yeah. Be. Uh, yeah. Uh, my, my current car, I think it's called Mavis, but it never really has a, <laughs> you know, sometimes a name catches on and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I think she's called Mavis, but she hasn't told me yet. No, it hasn't really <laughs> taken off. What's yours called? Uh, I haven't named my car. You haven't named your car. 
No. How about in the gallery? Do you have you got? I bet Nickers has definitely named her car. I've got a piano. I've la I've named my piano. Your piano. I've got a baby grand piano because that's a have piano. you? Yeah, um, and she is named Liza after Liza Minnelli. Of course. <laughs> oh, that's a fabulous name for a piano. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it must be. I tell you what, it must be tight around your house. What with all the sewing machines, a baby grand piano. Yeah. Do you, do you live in some sort of country estate? No, I think we need a country estate. Um, <laughs> We're buying a house at the moment. So actually, I won't be in Leicester for much longer. Oh, where are you moving to? I'm moving to Royal Levington Spa, darling. Royal Levington Spa? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, what? Oh. I mean, that's not that far, is it? No, it's, like it's still I it's always get Royal, it's... I always get Royal Tunbridge Wells and Royal Leamington Spa. Oh, confused. yeah, it's all these spa towns, isn't it? Yeah, Tunbridge yeah. Wells is more down south. Leamington's still in the middle. Oh, my friend um, Hayley lives in uh, Royal Leamington Spa. I'll pop round for a couple when I go oh, and see her. Oh, yeah, no, you definitely have to do that. Um, so, as you say, I've done like, some different parts, but then with these squares, then you can just kind of have a little look and a play around. Um, your quarter inches will be a lot better than mine because I haven't got my quarter inch foot on. Um, but you can then start to see, well, okay, we've got these lovely geometric shapes. And then this is where the illusion comes with any kind of quilting and piecing is the, um, and I'll, I'll maybe show you a bit in a minute is to, you know, you can really change these up so you can have like, that will make a diamond almost there. And that's quite a nice effect. That's Just lovely. by turning it that way. Um, and then maybe we could repeat that there as well. And actually you could repeat that all the way along. So you'd have like um, diagonal strips of colour um, and broken up with, you know, the Y, it really pops out against it. And all you do is like sew those together. Um, one thing that's really important to say when you are um, sewing pieces together is nesting your seams. Um, right. What does that mean? I hear you cry. What does that mean? <laughs> um, basically, um, I don't know if I can actually show you on these ones that I've done. Um, you want some, I'll tell you what, it's better to show you with some squares. Let me do some squares first. You see then with these larger squares, you could make um, a border. So if you had the strips running diagonally, like I just showed you, um, and then you could um, make a nice border with these as well. But yeah, just literally a quarter of an inch, but I'll just explain nesting to you because it's, is a thing that birds do, but it's also a thing that we do in quilting and piecing and patchworking as well. Oh, is it, a, it would be a thing in video editing, it would be, yeah. It's also, yeah, that's it. When I'm designing patterns and I've got lots of sizes, we'd say that they were nested together as well. Yeah, it's a common term, there you go. Wonderful, so I'm just doing this quickly now to demonstrate, but what we want to do is you would press your seam allowances one way there and then on the other one because we're going to join these together now is press them the other way what that's going to do let me trim those threads and practice what i preach make sure that we're nice and clear with those as well trim as you go along because it makes everything so much neater if we were to leave the seam allowances the same way, then you're putting all the bulk on the same side of the seam. Right. We want to spread that bulk, so we want to nest these. So I've folded, finger pressed them the other way, but you can give them a nice iron. And then what you would do is place those together, matching up that seam. But what I've got now is the seam allowances going in opposite directions. Ah, okay. So they're nested together, and I'd put a pin in there and then what I'd also do is put a couple more pins, maybe just along, if I was at home, not on telly, but let's just go for it on here now so you can see what I mean. It also means that when you're sewing it, you're not putting huge amount of layers and stress onto your machine as well. Get up to your pin, take your pin out. I've just done this randomly just to demonstrate what I meant, but... And then we come Lots the of car end. names coming in, which I'll share with you very shortly. What's that? Lots of car names coming in, which car I'll share names. with you very shortly. A white fiesta. A white fiesta. <laughs> fiesta, for those of you that are across the pond, is like a small compact car. Um, a white fiesta. Fiona. Fiona the Fiona fiesta. fiesta. It's always got to be alliterative, hasn't it? Wendy the white fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, I don't know. I'll come back to you, Jamie. 
Um, so oh, then, it's got to be female. All cars are female, aren't they? Uh, cars don't have ships. male names. I used to work a lot on cruise ships. Yeah. Yeah, and they're always called a ship. I used to work with a really good captain, actually, uh, from Poland. And he used to do this whole poem about why a ship was called a she. But right. in today's world, it's a little bit derogatory, really. Right, I mean, okay. it, it was meant tongue-in-cheek and, and quite light-hearted. And it always got a lovely reception when he'd read it out at his captain's night. Right. Um, but, yeah... I, I can't actually remember. Where the real did you, reason. when you worked on ships, and where did you, where did you work? All oh, over. I've done all over. I've not done much of Asia or Australia, but I did a lot of the Caribbean. Uh, I did a lot of the Canary Islands and the Mediterranean. I've done the fjords, and then I worked for a company called I don't know if I can say their name. Why not? Viking River right. Cruises. Um, and I was working for them I wonder along if the Rhine you... and Danube. My, my neighbour who lived two, doors of, two, two flats above me yeah. was a cruise director for Viking. Was still is, a guy called Kane. Maybe you know Kane him. Kane Davis? Yes, that's oh, my neighbour. Oh, my God, really? Yeah. I know Kane really he lives well. In the, he lives uh, two floors above me, exactly on the exact same corner of the building, two floors up. Yeah. But where what are you now in Manchester? Where I am now in Manchester, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, I was doing the same job as he was doing yeah, for Viking. Yeah, I thought yeah. you might. Yeah. And then the pandemic what? happened and I started selling. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what oh, a small world. World, eh? It's a is that? small world. Oh, I bet we've got loads of friends in common then. You'll have to, Probably. You'll have to add each other on social media and look at Let's. friends in common. I've actually already followed Adam, but he hasn't realised, obviously. Oh, have I not followed <laughs> you back? I don't know. I haven't checked. <laughs> <laughs> I will follow you back. Uh, okay, thanks. See, I'm a bit old fashioned with social media, right? Because I'm from an age where it's like I would only add people on, I suppose, if I'd actually met them in person. Oh, I think Facebook's different, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about Instagram. It's much more. <laughs> it's much more okay. yeah it's much less <laughs> it's much less personal <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean like you can just follow people and maybe don't even necessarily realise you follow them if they probably have lots well, of followers that's it exactly yeah I mean if you're you know Instagram famous like Adam you probably don't notice <laughs> when a lot of yeah. follows him <laughs> It goes nuts though, you know, when you do something on the telly and then it's like, oh, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I remember when I did the same thing and people were like, um, oh, you know, how are you finding it? And people like recognise you in your local supermarket or whatever. And I'm like, no, like it's mainly in fabric shops and sewing places, yeah. really. Although I did have a random lady in Stratford once that came running up to me. We were on a picnic. Um, and I was putting something in the bin and she come running up to me with what looked like rubbish in her hand and I thought that she was going to be giving me our rubbish so I said, oh, shall I take your rubbish and put it in the bin? And she went, no, 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 you're Adam from the sewing thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so bizarre, like, to, but that was kind of the, a one-off. But yeah, I hilarious. mean, you know, it's, it's no different really when I was on ships as cruise director, like you get to know everybody really, really well, all the passengers for that week um, and it'd be great. Um, I only did one cruise. I've only done one cruise. I'm desperate to do another one, though. Which one did you do? I did a Royal Caribbean cruise from Harwich, like a repositioning oh, one. Oh, yeah. Overnight to... We had an overnight in Amsterdam. Um, and Very then we nice. finished in Oslo. Oh, yeah. But I yeah. really want to go away with my partner on one of these virgin voyages. Oh, uh, yeah. But he's not having it at the moment. It's take, it will happen. It's just taking a little bit more convincing than I'd thought. I thought, I'd, I, I thought we were like August 2022 level of convincing. <laughs> I think we might be sort of spring 23 level of convincing. Oh, at the right. We'll okay. get there, we'll get there. You'll get there. That'll, it'll be fine, it'll happen. Um, no, they're great fun if you've never been on a cruise to, to do, absolutely. Um, you see a lot of the world in a short space of time on one holiday. And it's nice to get a taster of places that you might want to revisit again. When um, I worked for Crate and Craft, we did, they did a crafty cruise, Adam. Oh, I'd love to do one of them. Yeah, because apparently there's quite a few of them around now, crafty cruises. Yeah. Um, I've seen some quilting ones done before on Royal Caribbean. Um, we never had anybody come on and do anything crafty on the ones I worked on, really. Uh, there is a cruise. I think it's being marketed by... This is just turning into me and I'm planning holidays. Uh, <laughs> being marketed, I think it's by... P and O, and yeah. it's cruising with Jay McDonald. Actual Jay McDonald. Actual Jay McDonald. My auntie used to work with Jay McDonald. Well, I say my auntie's a singer, and right. way back when, when they were doing the club and pub circuit, like um, she worked with her quite a bit, and then obviously she made it on the cruises. Um, that's where she found her. 
fame, really. I and absolutely... I get dubbed now as the Jane McDonald of the sewing world. Do you? <laughs> oh. There's got to be a good... A good um, there's got to be a name in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, I love cruising with Jane McDonald at the show where she's like, yeah. oh, it's just me, Jane, from Wakefield. No one knows me here. And she's like, oh, a family from Leeds. And she's yeah. like, oh, no. it. It's exactly like that. God love her. <laughs> Right, I'm going to completely be honest today, no, but I've not got my quarter inch foot on, and you're going to right. see why it's important to have it on your machine. Um, it's because I've got a little bit of a ride with the matching up, but you can kind of see the effect that you can get. Like you could get some chevrons, because that would be point down if I made more of these. Um, you know, you can get really, really creative, and it's just from these very, very simple builder blocks. Um, three shapes in all of those different sizes, and they'll all complement each other. Um, so get creative with it and enjoy those fabrics and put them together and before you know it, you're quilting. And I've seen people that have never done any patchwork piecing or quilting before and have real success with these blocks because they cut so accurately. But I would say that, you know, a great addition to your machine is having that quarter inch foot um, on your machine. So you've got that guide to sew up against. I, the reason I'm having a bit of trouble is I can't quite see where my quarter inch marking is on my machine today. Um, so I'm having to guesstimate it a little bit, which you should never do. Don't, don't do what I do, do what I say. Um, so yeah, there you go, wonderful stuff. Um, and I say you've got them all in different sizes as well. And you could create panels of fabric, you know, you could bind it then, and add bits together and do whatever really. Um, you know, and get these bits sorted. Amazing. Um, I think the key really is either go, like I said, full on scrappy yep. or just pick like three colours that I have that complement each other with a, a colour that they're going to pop against um, and then you'll be winning really. Uh, amazing. Um, let me take you back through then the ones that you've got here, uh, which are these different ones. So you've got squares, which you can go for, uh, which is that one. And then you've got this one here which is your half square triangles. And you've also then got the quarter, stretch, quarter square triangles. Uh, so three different ones for you uh, within there, three different options to go for. All the same price, 20 pounds, 30 dollars, saving you 10 pounds or 15 dollars. Uh, and then you've got the double points uh, there as well. Don't forget also everyone uh, is you, you are going to be in the chance to get on the nice list as well. We are running out of opportunities to get on that nice list. There is one in this show, one in the next show, and then two from social media, and then that's it. And then we're going to have to draw uh, at random someone to win five hundred pounds or five hundred dollars to spend is on the website. Is that what you win if you get on the? If so, there's a, everyone on that list will go into a draw. Yes, and then we will. Uh, someone will win five hundred pounds or dollars to, sp to spend on the website. I've just been told I can't enter. No, you can't <laughs> enter. You can't. Uh, Cavi C says, oh, I'd love a crafting cruise. Uh, hubs, not so much, but I can leave them at home. There was a little while ago uh, when Derek was here. I don't know if you know Derek. Um, um, you, you must do. Uh, he do. works on the cruise channel and he, I think he's a uh, oh. hobby maker now. Yeah. So we were always taught, I, we, I was always saying what a great idea it would be if we did a crafter's companion cruise. Can you imagine? And it, it Who was do we need to speak to to make this happen? Well, I've been banging on about it for, for years now, and it never happened. But I thought we were maybe getting somewhere. Sarah was sort of softening up to the idea. Then COVID happened. Then it's never been mentioned again. Can you imagine how much fun it would be? So I think it would be amazing. It'd be and loads do you know of what? Fun. I thought about this because I've maybe got a bit of an in somewhere to make it happen. Yeah. Um, but I thought you always have a formal evening on yeah. a ship so you could do a crafting cruise where you make a gent makes a bow tie and a girl a lady makes like a nice like clutch yeah. and then you could do a beach bag as one of the projects and you could theme the projects to the right. places that you were going so the, Maybe so that's sort of the, for the events it. very clever do you know what the, very I think clever. there could be something in it honestly really if could. only we knew a dragon we could you know you could pitch that idea <laughs> <laughs> um, oh i wouldn't dare go on there i'd be useless <laughs> i wouldn't catch me on there uh, louisa <laughs> says we had a car called lady jan she was a Ford Anglia. I won't be broaching that subject with actual Jan later. Um, Deborah says, my car's name is Coco. It's a brown Buick Envision. I have no idea what that is, but I'm sure it's lovely. Um, Kirsty D says, my mam has a named her car Mercy. It's a Mercedes. Her old car was called Meg, a McGann. Uh, my dad's is called Foxy. 
Uh, it's a focus. <laughs> I like Foxy it. Foxy focus. Foxy focus. Uh, Susan's car is called Warren because the salesman was so helpful. Not sure if he was embarrassed when I told him the Dacia was a Warren. There you are, Dacia Warren. Um, Kimberly says, uh, I've got a blue Honda Fit. A blue Honda Fit, it's called Julian. There you are. Very, uh, I love that you give him just very plain names. Like when you call your dog Dave, you know, a dog, so just dog's got very sort of <laughs> random, plain uh, male name, um, animal names, human names even. Right, let's move on before I get myself in any more trouble. Let's have a little look at some other patchwork dies that we've got available for you with brilliant, brilliant savings, these ones. Uh, so let me take you through them. This one here is your so homemade patchwork die collection. Now, these, I'm not mistaken, I should be 6 99 each off the top of my head, these. Uh, but you can get all three of them for six ninety nine. So you're buying two, buying one, getting two free. So in here you've got your apple core, you've also got the diamonds, and you've then got your clamshells there too. Six ninety nine or nine ninety five. If you want to grab a hold of those, then we have also got this collection now. Um, very busy on these. The only way actually to get a hold of this one, which is your fabulous flowers. Uh, is to get it in this particular bundle. Uh, so you're going to in here, you're going to get the fabulous flowers. Again, a uh, brilliant saving. Look at that, £30 and $42 you save. So you've got your fabulous flowers, you've got your bloom builder in there, and you've got your reef and vines too. £12.99 or £19.95. Uh, that is a platinum price of £10.39 or £15.96. Um, right, any questions you've got, keep getting them into me. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion on YouTube, um, and Natalie from Hunky Dory will be up in about half an hour's time. We'll have a whole hour of Hunky Dory, so looking forward to that. Uh, but we're going to squeeze another demonstration in with Adam, I believe. Let's do it. I love okay, these fabulous flowers. They're cool, um, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I received mine only yesterday. And um, do you know what? Well, as soon as I seen them, I was like, there's so much inspiration you can take from these. Um, you can see on this lovely quilt here that we've used those flowers, just part of the die. Um, to create these lovely appliques onto this quilt. And you've got the leaves there as well, and there's other bits and bobs of designs and stuff. Um, and we'll focus on the flowers today, but they're so joyous, and you could make anything out of them. It doesn't just have to be applique. My mind to going, right, okay, well, we could make a nice felt flower and pop it on a card with a nice sentiment. So again, crossing over um, into different crafts and things, or perhaps it could be um, a nice brooch or a nice embellishment on something. And I think that's what these are really great for, is embellishing things. So again, I'm gonna show you um, the wonderful Gemini machine and how it can cut through this felt effortlessly and also um, show you how it can be used uh, as an embellishment, maybe on like a beach bag or, you know, or how you could turn it into a brooch maybe. Um, so yeah, that's an example there of a lovely quilt. But as I say, as much as I love quilts, it's nice to think about different projects, whether it be bags or whether it be something different. Um, I'm just gonna find where I've, um, pop that. I've got a canvas bag that I've made up here. I was gonna show us how to do some, embellishment on that here we go but as you can see here look that's cut out of felt and that's using um, that fabulous flowers dye um, and it's just so bright using tonal yellows and I was kind of thinking perfect for a sunflower um, if you put a little black button or black felt in the middle there like that would be perfect and uh, I've just got it on a square piece of card it fits fa perfectly on a five by five and that would be fabulous but then also maybe it could be a brooch or you know an embellishment on a bag which is what we'll talk about um, and you could use these with either having a sewing machine and doing some um, free motion embroidery um, or you know you could use them and hand stitch them whether it's just with a simple running stitch it's probably what we'll do today around these bits um, or you could do some blanket stitching or some decorative stitching, whatever you want, really. Um, you know, you can be as creative as you want. Um, really cool. So, uh, you know, do these flowers in different colours and pop them on something that's quite plain, which I'll show us in a minute. And, you know, you can really create a design feature on something. So they're a nice addition to have. And I would say, again, would complement your dies from the Builder block. If, if you're making some blocks and things, and you could really integrate the different projects. 
So again, um, to cut it, it's the same method as what we've got, um, did with the Build a Block series. So, you know, perfect for your Gemini machine. I'll just take these out here. Uh, Tansy Pansy says they think they met Johnny Depp on a cruise. Really? In the lift, they think so. Uh, we chatted, he was on the way to his, he was on the way to his little place in France. I told friends I met a dead ringer for JD. They all said, guess what? He was charming. There you go. You must have some good celeb stories to, uh, from uh, your time amid uh, the ocean waves. Well, first off, I'll say I don't think Johnny Depp's place in France is going to be little. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> I me can't neither. imagine that. Um, I don't know. Who have I met? I'll have to have a little bit of a thing. Because, I mean, I've been in the entertainment business for a while. Um, I got to audition for a pantomime once in front of Leslie Joseph. From oh, Rose well, that's Pepper. fabulous. Have um, you been in panto? Yeah, I've done have a few you? pantos. Oh, yeah. One of the things that I'd always love to do with panto. Yeah. And I've never done. Um, fantastic. I've, uh, I've met a few people. I've literally just worked costume on a West End tour of um, Rock of Ages. Right. Which is really interesting. And um, for any uh, watchers of Coronation Street, which is uh, a British soap, um, there's a guy in it and his character name was Curly Watt and he was in the show. Oh, he's in Rock of Ages? He, he's in Rock of Ages at the ah. moment, played a great role, um, a lovely chap. Uh, yeah, so many uh, different people. I, I love working in theatre environments especially. I can imagine. Um, oh, my friend, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Justin, was one of the, he worked on one of the original productions of Six the Musical in Wardrobe and still oh, works yeah. with the still works with like with the franchise i guess is what it is now but the outfits on that are spectacular so oh, a really yeah. cool thing to work on oh costumes are amazing um so with this diet it's got four different parts to this flower and i mean you could be really creative and use them with different colors but i'm just going to show you like with this one dye look we can quite easily see that we can fit it all on the one plate um, so again, you're cutting all of those shapes in one go. Um, and I'm just recapping me for anybody that's not seen this before. Uh, popping them onto plate A and then making sure that the die is down onto the fabric. So that's the groove side underneath. So it's cutting that way. Um, and then your plate B on top. And then your uh, next layer there. And just make sure they're all nice and lined up. And then through the machine. Amazing. Uh, remember what's happening later here on Crafter TV as well. So, uh, Hunky Dory coming your way in about 20 minutes' time, uh, which was exciting. And then a little later today uh, as well, we have got that masterclass. Myself and Nana Jan, uh, the headmistress of Crafter TV, as I like to refer to us, uh, is a masterclass uh, all about things adhesive, which will be fun. So make sure you join us for that a little bit later as well, with an added sprinkling of Hunky Dory too. That's from 6 p.m. in the UK, 1 o'clock, over on the East Coast. Lovely. Well, it's been a jam-packed day today. Oh, it really it? has, really hasn't good. it? Really has been a jam-packed one today. I love it when you know you've got lots of different crafting and lots of different you know people. It's variety, and I find as well. Do you do like when you start one craft, then it's like oh oh I really want to have a go at that. Yeah, and it's I mean, one and, of those things, isn't it? Yeah, and it's you know kind of going right. Okay, let me concentrate on one thing at a time. <laughs> okay, so that that's cut those like really really lovely. Um, and I say a nice clean cut. Now, if you're going to be doing any applique or anything like this, then I'd strongly recommend like going for felt first. And there's a couple of reasons. It's nice and stable. You can see it cuts nicely in the Gemini machine, but also felt doesn't fray. So you're not going to be dealing with any edges and stuff. So if you aren't going to use any kind of interfacing or um, bonder web to adhere it to something, then, you know, because bond web or interfacing would stop it fraying to a degree at the sides if you were using a cotton, but felt's perfect for these kind of dies um, because it doesn't fray. So there you are, and you can see you can layer them up. I've done that all in the same colour to demonstrate, like you could cut that whole flower in one, but, you know, mix up the colours and use some tones and stuff. But we're going to work on this nice little orange one here, and all I've done is alternated it with the bright orange and then the lighter orange if you like um, and yeah you could do a number of things with this now i quite like the idea of um sewing some buttons onto these and keeping mm, them quite 3d um, so i've got some buttons with me today um, and as i say you can go with uh with the applique route and you can 
after a nice blanket stitch or whatever it might be. Do you know what? I have so many toolboxes with all my craft gear in. Um, <laughs> and there's a craft caddy that you do, and I need to make it because honestly, like, I, need to, I love having all my stuff organised. Um, here we People go. Are, uh, Susan's asking which character I would play if I was going to be in a panto. Great question. Probably Widow Twanky, I'd imagine. Would you? Yeah, absolutely. You'd like to do, do uh, play the dame. I, I like love laundry. That's so it would be perfect, perfect role for me. Uh, uh, what pantos were you in, Adam? Um, I've done Aladdin, right. and I've done Sleeping Beauty, and I've done Cinderella. Wowzers. Yeah. So the classic ones, I suppose, really. Yeah, all the classics. So some of them are quite obscure now, aren't they? Ones yeah. You make. Wizard of Oz, the panto, I, I, was one I saw recently. A bit, yeah. of strange, bit of a strange one for a panto. There's some um, older ones as well, uh, like Babes in the Wood is like an older mm. one, but then they were never as popular. Like the popular ones always seem to be like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. There's in Cambridge they have their very traditional the pantos, and yeah. the prince is played by a woman. Yeah, which well that, apparently yeah, is the, that's like it. the principal male role is uh, male character is played by a female, which apparently is like the traditional thing. It to is. Do. That is absolutely right. That is the traditional way. Um, and yeah, and the dame to be played by a man. Yes. Um, and in fact, I think uh, when I first... Our very own, you know, Ben Mosby has played the dame in multiple pantos oh, over yeah. the years. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. Who else is saying? Kirsty D says, I've done panto. I was in Aladdin when I was a kid. It was very tiring, especially when you, have to, when you have school as well as every night and then two shows on a Saturday. Some, some of the pantos do like three show days don't they uh, they have like a oh, 9 a.m yeah, a 9 a.m show can you imagine yeah i've been i've been there and i've done it you know it's, it's quite um quite a challenge really i don't know if panto would be for me actually because i am very vocal about the fact that i don't really like children <laughs> oh right so okay oh, do you maybe, not <laughs> maybe it wouldn't be for me after all could play the baddie yeah that's a good idea actually so this is just in its simplest form using these felt shapes i'm going through all layers now um, i'm just going to sew this button on and that's just going to attach all of those layers um because i quite like the idea of keeping it particularly with this shape keeping it quite um 3d I quite like that so and again i just want to demonstrate that not all sewing you have to do on a sewing machine. Absolutely. Like if you've got a needle and thread, then perfect. You know you can you can get going and uh, and have some fun. And again, perfect thing to do maybe with the kids over the summer holidays, maybe um, or whatever it might be. Let me get my needle through there. There we go. Um, and it and you could you know again in its simplest form if you were going to use it as part of some paper crafting you could glue the felt onto cards you know what i mean but i think what we, what the best thing is here is that you're getting these shapes wonderfully cut obviously you're having to use the gemini um but you know they're so versatile in what you can do with them okay so i've um all i've done is sewn that button on and that's going to keep all of that together um, and then we'll have a look at some of these other shapes as well if we get some time. I'm just going to tie that off on the back. Um, and I say, you could, if you wanted to, is um, just do a simple running stitch um, around these uh, curves as well. Like you could sit there in front of the TV and do it if you wanted to. Um, or you could free motion it on the machine or you know whatever it is that you want to do. Um, just have fun and get creative with it. But I just thought, like, I, I've just bought in a very neutral bag that I'm putting together and I might put some embroidery on it at some point. It's not even completely made yet, but just want to give you an idea. I've got the straps that I need to attach to this bag. This, this bag I made with two 18 by 18 inch um, squares. And then what I did was bag out the corners I just want to show you, like, you could put it near the handle, um, if we can see that on there, or you could put Why it, am like, I seeing some sort of fabulous swimming costume with these uh, appliqued onto them, Adam? It did bit it's 70s, looking, it? Very, <laughs> looking very Priscilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think they're the perfect thing. So say if we got the handle up there, look, we could put then, just move down a little bit, 
this flower, and it just adds a real lovely accent to something, which I think is just beautiful. Um, and that's what I think we need to think about with these, really, is like um, using them to embellish. So all I'm going to do is sew through that buttonhole again. Uh, sorry, yeah, the hole of the button. If I can get my needle in there. So I'm struggling. There we go. But as you can see, like on the piece that we'd got demoed there, as well, I'm just doing this very quickly for you now, because I know we've, you know, got time and stuff. But um, you can you can use them on your quilting projects or whatever. I'd really doubled up the thread here. That's a good trick for you actually. When you're sewing on buttons and stuff, I quadruple up my thread so that I know it's going to hold. And that was something I learned on the sewing bee because one of the judges on there has a habit of pulling buttons off. Mm. And looking back on it, I was like, I should have just quadrupled my thread and then even going through once and tying it off, it's going to hold it really securely. So there's a little tip How from mean me to you. of them to just be pulling, pulling buttons off? And, uh, <laughs> was it, so your well, season, was it, it was, um, would it have been Joe Lysett that did your season? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he's my absolute favourite. I adore He's amazing. That man. He's yeah. like, I suppose he would be the biggest celebrity, I bet. And oh, really? There you are. Yeah. Um, and do you know, he's such a lovely guy. Like, down, down to earth. Really funny, yeah, really funny. And um, just a nice human being. Yeah, he seems it. I went to see him in stand up in Peterborough and sat in the front row in the very centre. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he came out and was like, I am instantly drawn to you. <laughs> and then proceeded to absolutely rip me for most of the first half. I loved it, obviously. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, with these, I mean, even if I did that, I mean, I know it's quite simple, but sometimes simple is effective. And you could have, like, I'd probably just keep with the one on there and then probably go with some of the green leaves um, in the other dies that we've got. Um, the leaves that you've got there and the stem, you could bring the stem right down on this bag, put some leaves on there. And that's where you could get in with a machine if you wanted to um, and to create these different shapes. But I just wanted to show you that it doesn't all have to be difficult. And like everything that I've shown you today is set up in such a way that all the thinking has been taken out of it for you. And whether you use it simply you know, sewing a button on or doing all those stitches with the FPP, like you can really create some really impressive projects. Mm, absolutely, you can. Uh, and also, let's face it, £12.99 is all you are investing to it? try something new. £12.99 to get you Do those it. three die sets, uh, which is incredible. Uh, Adam, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to finally get to work with you. Yeah. Uh, it's been wonderful. And I won't see you next time. You won't see me next time because I'll be watching Lady Gaga, oh. unfortunately. They said, do you want to work with Adam or do you want to go and see Lady Gaga? And I was like, but it's a tough choice. So I really, got, I, I really <laughs> yeah, had to yeah, think right, about right. it quite a lot. <laughs> uh, but Le Gaga did win uh, eventually. Uh, a safe trip at uh, home. Sure, we'll yeah, see you again. So uh, and if you, yes, if you want to join you, Adam will be back in two weeks' time. Uh, as well, which will be amazing. Whilst uh, Mrs. Mrs. Swan is still uh, oh, no. sunning herself uh, Bless her. she in Mallorca. She messaged me this morning. She says, the best of luck, Adam, you'll be fat. But she's, <laughs> such a, she's so lovely, Becky. She is so lovely. She's utterly, utterly joyous. Right, uh, we'll be back with our Hunky Dory. So whilst uh, we get ready for that, we're going to take a quick break and we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Quiet. Ah, oh, the neighbors. I'm all out of Zoom. I'm so lost without you. I'm not, I'm not singing. I'm not singing. Lisa, if you email in, don't send a picture of your air fryer. Make sure it's something creative. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at CraftersCompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us, 
you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crappus Companion is magical. There's magic here. Joy, there's not a dry eye in the studio here. <laughs> Debbie's welling up. I'm welling up. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV. Create every day. Quick buy. All your crafty must-haves in a flash. Put away your tape measure and fabric scissors. The Threaders Fabric Cutter offers accuracy and precision with every cut. This handy tool slices through fabric in a guillotine style. Its ergonomic design features a comfortable and protective handle, so it's safe and easy to use whether you're right or left-handed. Its 45mm rotary blade will cut up to six layers of fabric at a time, so your sewing, quilting, and upholstery project times are cut down to size. It's equipped with a measuring guide in metric and imperial for a perfectly accurate cut every time. The built-in grid ruler has 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree angle lines, so you can cut fabric on any angle, including the bias. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Make light work of intricate and delicate die cutting designs with the Pokey Tool from Crafters Companion. An absolute essential part of any paper crafters kit, its precise tip has been designed to release the tiniest pieces to reveal your finished results with absolute precision. And to make sure your finished project is perfect, each Pokey Tool has a rubber tip protector, so there's no risk of damaging your die cutting design or yourself. The Crafter's Companion Pokey Tool is such an essential craft item, we've included two in each set. Quick buy. Get yours now. We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our Gold and Platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new Express 3-7 to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Oh, we are back. Uh, how are you feeling? Rested? Yes, very rested. Did you get yourself some lunch? Some I nice did. Chill out? The best jacket potato ever. Oh, isn't the, the cafe here? Best. Isn't the cafe here exceptional? So good. Christina in the in the cafe, and also you got to get yourself here on a Tuesday and a Thursday because there's a special on a Tuesday and a oh. Thursday. Some lasagna, mac and cheese. Oh my goodness. Uh, gravy and chicken and stuffing in a bun. You've not lived in a bun. I know. Anyway, enough about the cafe. Uh, we are back with Lafley and all things hunky-dory. My, my, we had a busy show, didn't we? It was busy. Uh, earlier. I know we have uh, gone through an awful lot of the stock. Uh, and this really, I think, is what is absolutely causing everything to go into meltdown. I'll bring the details in for you. It's the uh, Christmas, it's the ultimate Christmas collection uh, that we are looking at firstly. So, uh, in the ultimate Christmas collection, you are going to receive all the toppers that we're about to share with you. Yeah. And then you're getting all of the other elements as well. Let's just change those details for you on the screen. Uh, so the Christmas Ultimate Collection uh, is what we're talking about, uh, of course. We will change those. Uh, we'll give you the details for the Ultimate Collection. Whilst we do that, let's take you through the boards because there's so, there's so, so much, much in there. There's like the best of four Christmas collections all consolidated yeah, into got one. Traditional, you've got contemporary, you've got fun, um, and you've got snowy. All the different things we all love about Christmas are all mm. compiled into kits. You get eight toppers in those like four selections. All together, though, that's 32 toppers. Wowzers. 32 toppers. And then you've got your cardstock that goes alongside that as well. So you're going to get 
96 in total. That's ridiculous. It's 96. Less than 50 pence per sheet. It's madness. Before isn't it? you even think about, uh, well, just on the toppers actually, if you're going for the toppers of the magazine. So the value's even better in the Ultimate Collection. It's crazy. Over a third's gone. Wow. Though, by the way, just in our first show alone. That's so it's crazy. very, very busy. Um, so this is the first of the three. This is Christmas traditions. And in here, you've got really traditional colours. You'll see a lot of red, green, and gold because um, that's just Christmas all over, isn't it? Um, but it, our top of sets, you've got different varieties of things. So in this one, we've got a decoupage sheet with that really nice Great Gatsby sort of um, vibe going on here. Uh, we've got textured foiling throughout this one, which is lovely um, because it has all of that detailing in that you can see. Um, each one as well, the way that we've laid it out, you can see the coordinating cardstock, beautiful foiling detail throughout here as well. Um, and then you've got the beautiful coming home for Christmas with the little um, golden retrievers. And I absolutely love this image of the angels. I think it's so gorgeous the way it's been designed and all put together. And then you've got sort of like that music sheet running through in it's all like, of the um, details It's like Reason well. for the Season style, but more stylized, isn't yeah. it? Which is really, really lovely. It's so that's your so, so fun. first one. That's the first one. I mean, we're going to take us a while to get through these, but <laughs> you are getting an awful lot in here is what I would say. And that's say. just half of the first one. This is the second one. Um, this one, you've got Joy to the World, so you've got religious connotations in here. You have classic Santa in here. And then you've got um, the Christmas traditions of the 12 days of Christmas, which I absolutely love. Oh, Each 12 I didn't work day out that's what they were is earlier. popped on there as well. Um, and this is a fantastic topper to really mix and match and create some fun cards with. Um, but again, texture foiling um, on here. We've got beautiful details within the cardstock. And then you've got the plain cardstock as well, which all works so well together. Really, um, really does. So that is your... It just makes your card uh, That's maybe. your traditional Christmas. Yes. And then moving on to festive style, which is your more contemporary um, selection. So I you've love got... this one. Me too. Mm. I feel like it, even though it's got that religious theme in it, the way that you've got sort of that like patchwork design in there, like um, their capes and things, it's, it's just very, amazing. Very, very cool. Um, gorgeous. Then you've got the um, beautiful one again, perfect for anniversary. Quite music scandy, business. isn't it? It's really, really lovely. Um, and then Peace on Earth with the blue foiling. That's a different type of foiling in here. And then this one's my favourite. I know it's your favourite. Mm. Absolutely love it. It reminds me of Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam it's like Christmas Amsterdam time. or Budapest. Yeah, it yeah, is Amsterdam. All of at Christmas those places time. with those incredible sort of buildings that you yeah. just spend hours staring at. Um, but it's gorgeous. The way it's been foiled, the way you can see different things in the... Um, I mean, even down to the detail, yeah. like the tiny little Christmas tree Christmas that you've got tree in, the in the window. In there. I mean, it's it is amazing. It's phenomenal, isn't it? Um, but this one's a really fun collection. Perfect. It's got more quirkier themes, um, like this one here with a cosy Christmas. You've got the, the camper van, which is completely different. Um, a blooming lovely Christmas, again, is a decoupage sheet, which you can make up. Um, and then we have the Christmas cocktails, which has the Delicious. fantastic mince pie topper set. Um, and then for those ball ballerinas in our life, we've got Festive Sparkle in this one. Again, is really beautiful. You'll see, you've, you've seen in this one that there's a mixture of foiling. Mm. Um, you've got coloured, you've got gold, and you've got silver throughout this one. So it really, really works to just show off the different designs that we've got in here. So that is your festive style. Now we're yeah. moving to Snowy Days. So Snowy Days is the sort of penultimate Christmas. You've got snow adorned on all of the different toppers and the designs. We've got Christmas Blessings, which has the beautiful church scene in it. Um, we've got the decoupage here with the, the all lays up onto the tag to create a beautiful Father Christmas image. This one is the favourite with the being mm. um, the Jubilee with the fantastic imagery there of the um, the horses and Buckingham Palace. And then the very cute little robins there for the lovebirds. Seasons tweetings again. Another one perfect for weddings mm. or anniversaries. Anything that's around that winter time that you're celebrating. And also, guys, you're getting all of this in the all ultimate. This. And this really is like... Scratching his own, and then a whole load of other stuff as well. There's loads well. of stuff in it. Um, so in here, this one, again, snowy scenes. Really cute animal um, imagery we in wish here. wish you. I know. <laughs> There's so many puns <laughs> running throughout this. You've got beautiful um, snowflake foiling on this one, which really pulls out the detail of yeah, the little It's like embossing images. and foiling together, isn't it? It's mad. It's so, so incredibly detailed. Um, and then the beautiful hideaway, which I think everyone just wants to run away to at Christmas. Of course. And then the Christmas cuties. Christmas cuties. This one is filled with fun. We have um, a perfect Christmas with all our cute pooches on. We've got the Yeti. Is it Christmas Yeti? 
Um, is it Christmas? <laughs> love that with the holographic foiling. That's funny. The very cute scene here with um, Santa going over the snowman, but it's a bit more of a fun twist on that image. And then we have Merry Christmas with a very sweet little mouse on the holly bushes. Um, but the foiling detail is phenomenal, whether it's in the toppers or just the cardstock on itself. It's gorgeous. This is the final this one's four. This great. It is brilliant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really cool. Um, Mooey Christmas there with your um, Highland cattle. You've got the beautiful penguins, which is really, really fun. I love that one. Um, and the polar bear hugs with, again, blue foiling, which is completely different. But also, these ones with the blue foiling work really well with your free gift that you're going to get. Yeah, you they do. It's a great point. Um, and then you've got your snow much form, which has the stacking snowman on, which I think is really cute how they're all um, compiled on top of each other to get that star on the tree. Yeah, really cool. And that is what you are getting. That is your topper collection. So that is what is in uh, the collection. Uh, should we, let's, uh, let's just put on the Oh, moving the moment. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so we'll put those back up on there. Now, I know you're going to run off and get ready, aren't you, yeah, for your first demonstration. Yeah. Whilst you do that, I'm going to take you for everything else that you are getting in this collection. So the ultimate set will also give you the magazine as well. So in the magazine, loads of different ideas, and it incorporates all of the different Christmas collections that you've seen. You've also got loads of different papers in there too I've bought you to use, uh, which is amazing. So you can see all of those uh, within there too, which is excellent. You will get that included. Now, if you want to just go through the toppers and the, um, the, toppers and the magazine on its own, they're available for you. I'm going to quickly give you the details for just the toppers and the magazine. It is called the 2022 Christmas Blockbuster Set. So we'll give you the details really quickly for that. Uh, in they come. Uh, so $44.99, $64.99 saves you £40 or $60 almost. That is not the most popular option in the show. I'm going to switch the details back to the Ultimate Collection and we're going to share with you what else you are getting because there is absolutely loads in here. Let's bring it all in. Uh, so you are then going to get inserts. Now the inserts are brilliant. You're getting 16 sheets of inserts for each collection which is amazing so that is 70 hang on 16 32 64 sheets of inserts in total across the different collections which is brilliant that's on top of your toppers and you've got that then for each one of these collections so exactly the same here as you'll see uh, for the uh, traditional Christmas you've got all of those different inserts and again the same for the snowy days and all the collections in there so you're gonna get all of your inserts included which is brilliant you're also gonna get the little book and in the little book you're gonna get 144 sheets of toppers which is just amazing you can see it all ties in with the imagery that is running through those main collections. So it's all going to work together so beautifully and so seamlessly. So that is your little book that is coming included for you. You can see for not really much extra money wise, you are getting an absolute shed load more products. Uh, it's really going to help you stretch out that uh, Christmas collection, all of that different Christmas crafting. Uh, here are as well, you're also going to get the Hunky Dory uh, Adorable Scorable 40 Sheet Christmas 2022 Collections. It's the Christmas colour releases for you uh, in this particular collection. I mean, it is an amazing bundle. You should be looking at £127.89 and it would be worth every single penny of that. However, today we've taken it down to a penny uh, shy of £68, which is brilliant value, Shave, saving you almost, shaving you, different kind of show, saving you uh, almost £60, which is excellent. If you are in the US, you should be looking at $185. We've brought that down to under $100 today, saving you just under $90. But Platinum members, under £55, under $80. It's brilliant. You're going to be able to make so, so many cards with this particular uh, collection when you get it home. Uh, any questions that you have got, uh, please get them into me. Crafters TV over on Facebook, uh, Crafters Companion if you are across on YouTube. Loads of you letting me know that you've placed your orders. Now, stock update wise, on the Christmas Ultimate Collection, 40%, over 40% of the stock has gone. We've only had one show. We've got two more full live hours to go. I'm not sure if this is going to uh, make it throughout the day. Uh, the Ultimate and the Blockbuster both now on 40%. I'm so pleased that these are so busy, Natalie, because I, I know so many people are going to be making some incredible Christmas cards with these, aren't they? They really will. It's just so easy to craft with as well because everything works together, you know, from your toppers to your cardstock. 
everything coordinates perfectly and that's what's so, so great about this is it's so easy to craft with. Um, I'm going to do a demo first of all with our festive style. This one's one of my favourites because it's a little bit more quirky and I know that a lot of people um, like to make smaller cards for their crafting so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do a little 6x4. We're going to make it a bit interesting by turning it into an easel. So I've got a 6x4 tenth fold card. Um, so you've got the fold at the top of your card and then we're just going to score that at three. Um, so we're starting off by making that base um, and then this is going to fold over to create our easel. Um, then I'm going to take our plain cardstock and we're just going to cut this um, to two eighths of an inch smaller than the four. Um, so just pop in that on there because we're going to mat and layer this onto some um, beautiful Miri card. Do you know um, what I've done, uh, Natalie, as well? I, I mean, I've gone and shortchanged everyone, haven't I? Why? I haven't told them about the free gift. No, you haven't. I know you mentioned it. How rude. How rude of me. Uh, everyone that places an order today is going to get the free gift, and it is these beautiful die-cut, foiled, hunky-dory snowflakes. Ooh. Uh, only, though, uh, while stocks last, so make sure you get your orders placed sooner rather than later if you want to get those. They're going to be a great addition, aren't they, to your, so, uh, your Christmas collection? Definitely. And they work so well with some kits, especially with this one that we're particularly using now because it's a different colour. So I've cut um, my second panel off from here and then we've trimmed that down to make it up and we're going to stick this onto some Miri now. So you just want to get some... Um, tape or you could use glue here. I'm going to pop that on here and then layer these up and then we can pop them onto our card. So I'm adding these um, this time to some of our sort of like turquoisey teal Miri card. Now this um, colour in particular is from our festive selection which I believe that we have on the website as well. Um, so this is our festive Miri which works really really nicely because it coordinates so well with the colours that you have in this kit and the foiling on the main topper selection as well. So just adding this onto here and I've gone for a really, really thin edge of Miri. And then my last piece is gonna go on the bottom of my card. So just fold that over, watch that out of the way. And then we'll add uh, that loads of people here. let me know that they've got their orders in. I'd love to know if you've gone for uh, the hunky dory uh, items today uh, in the show. Um, Shadia says, Hi Natalie, welcome to Crafters TV. Cannot Thanks. wait to see your inspiration. Is this not is this the first time you've been to Maturity? It is the first is time it? I've been. Oh, yeah. You should have told me. I thought you were I thought you were part of the furniture now. I thought no. maybe I just missed you. I thought you maybe you just been here on the day. No, they don't let here. me. I'm too troublesome in the office, so they thought, nah, she's Get not rid coming of you. up. Get let Anne Marie, out. let Anne Marie do this. And then um, Anne Marie unfortunately couldn't come this um, time, so she was like, all right then, we'll let you go up. So then, yeah, <laughs> it's my first time. Oh, I'm having I had no so idea. much just fun already. already been. No, just because no, we're no. old friends, I thought everyone knew you were. I know. How rude of me. Um, Anita says, I've been waiting for this. Love Hunky Dory. Uh, Hannah Law says, I love everything Hunky Dory. Uh, Donna Lee says, Place my order on the wake up this morning. Can't wait to get my order. Uh, Val says, She loves everything. And being able to get a platinum discount is the best. Uh, Tansy Pan says, Everything is glorious. Mary Ryan says, Wow, how beautiful is this set? Love the 12 days of Christmas uh, design. A really hard theme to find in card making. Great point, that. It is, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to do a little bit, something a little bit different with this now. Instead of having my easel the opposite way, I'm going to have it this way so it, it creates that sort of like bouncy effect. So um, I'm just going to add my topper on. For this one, I'm going in with the beautiful dove because it's a small um, topper and it's going to work really nicely. And I'm actually going to remove that um, frame off because although it's really nice and detailed, um, I think the design in this cardstock is beautiful. I've got some red tape on the back of my largest frame and we're just going to stick that onto a bit of snowfall acetate. Now this is just going to give it a little bit more strength and then we can cut around this. Snowfall acetate is such an amazing, incredible product and perfect for all of your Christmas crafting. Whether you're doing um, pieces like this or whether you're making it the front of your cards, it's just such a good thing to have in your stash. Yeah, we've got that snowfall acetate on the oh. show as well. We'll give you the details uh, for that. We'll flash those up. Um, it's $14.99, $21.74 is your price on that. So I'm just going to trim that around and then we're going to bring in some of our um, strip foam pads. I'm just going to pop this on 
halfway around my circle and then my other piece is going to go around. Um, no, my other piece isn't going to go around the bottom because that is going to stick on it otherwise. So we're just going to pop this now um, sort of in the middle of this card here. And then my topper. That Miri card, sorry to interrupt you, Natalie, that you just talked about. Oh, yeah, the festive. Limited stock, <gasps> the Miri card. No I'll way. Just bring the details in again for the Miri card just to share it with you because if you've got it in your basket, you need to check it out. It's going to be uh, the first sellout. It's there. We'll just give you the details for you. So just add in a sentiment to create a stopper, which is something that we can do really nicely with some shapes like these larger ones. And then I'm going in with my free sheets. It's of... that one there on the screen, Miri Card Essentials, festive mega buy, 30 sheets. If it's in your basket, check it out, it is going to go. There you go, so it's our free, just decorating these with those beautiful blue snowflakes that you get included in that free pack. Um, and then there you go. We beautiful. are done. So it's just a nice way of doing a different easel, having it the other way round, um, sort of like on an angle, it looks totally different. Uh, very, very busy across absolutely everything uh, that you've seen. Uh, that's the details on the screen there for the Miri Card Essentials. Let's change those details. Let's change the details back though to the Christmas Mega Bundle, which is what you saw uh, a moment ago. Let's just recap those details. That's gonna get you everything that we just looked at. So here it is, uh, it's the ultimate set, includes 32 toppers plus four, 64 coordinating inserts. You've got uh, the little book, the magazine, you've got absolutely everything. It really is, if you want to create as many Christmas projects as physically possible, this is the one for you. Get it whilst it's on double points which is amazing we're going to look next at winter wildlife this one has also been very busy uh, throughout the course of the day a lot of the stock has gone here remember what you always get as well included is that amazing inspiration sheet so you've always got something to work towards maybe especially if you're a new crafter you struggle with the composition this is going to allow you to do that beautifully so you've got that there let's go through the toppers i love this because we were saying earlier weren't we natalie that it's a a really easy one to gift wildlife isn't yeah. it something that so many of us love so maybe for people that you don't know that well you can always fall back on this style of card yeah i think everyone sort of loves this and it's so um really really beautiful you know you've got that snowfall effect again throughout all of these toppers um so it gives you that real sort of christmasy feel beautiful red greens and golds throughout this um it's just a, a really, really heartwarming collection. Um, and like you said, perfect for giving to anyone. Um, and also perfect for maybe any animal charities that you craft for, because um, they're gonna love, love, love this at Christmas time. It is absolutely joyous. 39.99, 57.99. So they're the toppers uh, and your printed and your foil and printed cardstock that you're going to get in there. We also have extra elements. We do have the dies available as well, don't we, I believe, in this particular we collection. We do. These ones those? are really, really lovely. They're um, great, aren't they? I, feel, I find them. I've seen them. I feel like I've seen them around. I feel like I've seen them around yeah, as well. We'll have a look for them in a minute. <laughs> I'll just take you through what else you're getting in the collection. The inserts, which don't need to be inserts, Natalie, do they? No, you can use these on the front of your card. They are muted versions of the cardstock, um, but they can give such a different um, point to your cards by using them on the on the front. And you can mix and match them with the papers that you get in this selection as well, because you do get double sided papers as well, which are adorned with like patterns that are run through the whole of the kit. So it really is something that maybe when you've run out of cardstock, you can add these in. Yeah, brilliant for that. Then you're also going to get the little book, uh, which is this one over here which is excellent. Again, another 144 pages. These have become a bit legendary, haven't they, these little books? Yeah, I remember little when they books first are everyone's favourites. I think a lot of people tend to buy two as well and sort of have one for crafting, have one to keep in a little little book library. Yeah, and you absolutely can do that. Any of the individual elements that you'd like to multi-order on, they are available separately. Everything in the show pretty much is available individually for you as well, which is excellent. So you're going to get that included in there. And then you're also going to get this concept as well. So you've got these brilliant, uh, beautiful box cards. Uh, and we'll be seeing one of those uh, put together a little later 
uh, today. I'm going to do it next. Is that what you're doing next? Yeah. Brilliant. So don't go anywhere. Do you know how many this makes, the concepts? You're going to get um, two of each design and there's four, so eight in total. Eight of those concept there cards. Brilliant value. Uh, $39.99 or $57.99 uh, is your price there on those. $31.99 or $46.39 as a Platinum member. Now, do we have the dies that go with this particular collection? I think I've seen them. I'm going to They're investigate. Somewhere. I'm going to rummage, you know. I'll They're tell you what, let's go back beautiful. over to Natalie uh, for the demo. And I am going to have some, I'm going to do a bit of investigating, see if I can find them. I'm sure I've seen them knocking around, you know. Okay, so these are great. Concept cards are really fun because um, they make 3D models, but they're super quick to do and really good um, for giving as gifts. So what you want to do is pop this out. Now, I'm going to do the beautiful donkey image here. So I'm going to take this out of the pot out of the um, card, card sheet and they just pop out so easily um, on here because it's all foiled, it's all die cut for you. So we've got that and then we need our coordinating card blank and on your card blank sheet as well you also have another element of the decoupage which is going to sit inside. So I'm going to take this out and, and then I'm going to remove my sentiment as well. So just popping them to one side and we'll come back to them. You want to then take out your um, image from your frame and that's where you can layer up your decoupage to go inside it because these images just fit beautifully on top of one another to create a really nice pyramid effect here. So we're going to line that up. What's it called when it's, like I so. call it outitage, outitage, ninipage. <laughs> What was the proper Invitage name for them? Invitage and pyramage. Invitage and pyramage, that's it. Initage and outitage. <laughs> I like, like that. Belly I like that's that how though, I think of I'll use it. Um, and then we're going to um, move on to the frame element now. So you want to add red tape to all four edges of the outside, which I've done already. And then on the inside, where you don't have the sort of like sticky out tabs, I'm going to add a piece of red tape. Now, red tape is the best to use when constructing things like this because this is something you don't want to be sort of falling apart and you want to keep it for a really long time. And then within your um, concept card kits as well, you also get these little four by four squares of snowfall acetate. Now this is going to sit um, in your little um, sort of window here. You don't need to add this on, but it is added for you, it's all included and it looks absolutely amazing. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it over where it's going to sit because because it is square and this is rounded. We just need to trim off those edges. Um, and this is something that you'll need to do when you get yours home as well. Just trim them away so that you can easily fit this together. Now, I think I just need to trim a little bit more off the sides because it is a bit too big just to fit in that gap. But once you've got that space there, you just need to be able to make sure that you can, have I stuck that on the right way? Let me just get rid of this. You just need to be able to make sure, sorry, that you can fold all of the edges. So now is just a case of bending all of our score lines, which are already put in for us. We don't need to work this out. We don't need to get our scoreboards out. It's all done. So fold them all over and then I'm going to build this up now. So taking off the tape from these smaller tab sections, one, two, three and four. And then these little edges bits here sort of curve around and meet up really nicely with that section. So that's what we're going to do the whole way around. I'm just going to bend this section. You can use your score tool or just the, the edge of your finger just to round it off and follow that sort of line shape on the outside of your card to build this together. There's two more to go. Well, there's number three. And then again, just curving that round and then sticking that in place. And then you've obviously got your frame which is going to fit perfectly onto your card blank. Before we stick that all down though, we need to pop our pyramage in here. So just taking off the last little bit of tape and then I'm going to stick that centrally, take off the red tape from the back of these tabs and you can do it sort of like in halves if you find it easier, sort of stick one quarter down and then 
then the follow through on the rest one of them but I think we're just going to risk it do it all at once uh, it's so. very very busy across the website I've got lots of updates to give you about lots of different products after this demonstration but we are going to have a lot of sellouts uh, in this particular airing of How all things hunky dory I can tell you that much for sure it is extremely busy over on the website at the moment so just popping that in place now and then this amazing sort of card blank is going to hide all of the workings um, and stick all of that down. So you've got that card, but you've also got that beautiful pyramage on the inside, and then you can add your um, sentiment. So I'm going to do for a lovely couple, because I feel like these donkeys are very much in love. Um, and then I think we've got Winter Wishes Just For You, which I might add to the back of my um, image here. So I'll just trim some foam pad down, pop that on, and then that can just sit on the back there and then that is how easy it is to create your um, amazing concept cards and you've got them in all of the four designs really gorgeous lots of love coming in for na your nails uh <laughs> rachel our uh, um social media superstar absolutely loving them i don't know what it was in reference to but helen montgomery says joe i love your honest and down-to-earth phrases <laughs> i know i can't I, there's no changing it sorry there really, really isn't uh what size does the snowy acetate come in it's a4 isn't it the snowy acetate the a4 the acetate that you're going to buy in a shot is in a pack sorry is a4 in size yep so Brilliant. i think you get 32 um pieces in that 24 sheets 24 in yep. 24 sheets in that um, the size that comes with your concept card is cut down to four by four so you just need to trim it a little bit but you get little squares in that concept card but then if you buy in the pack it's a4 amazing i will take you back through what you're getting in the winter wildlife collection in just a second we do have the dies though uh, that go with this that are uh, going to complement this it's your on the edge christmas greetings these are a bit fabulous aren't, aren't they? they really really cool so what you've got in here are your different sentiments brilliant price as well 14.99 to get what are essentially what five ed five edgeable dies so you can see here how they cascade up but you've got different sayings in here so you've got uh, jingle bells, seasons greetings, Christmas wishes, peace and joy, and snow is falling. So you've got all of those in there. They really are cool. Let's go back to that winter wildlife then and go back through exactly what you're getting in that winter wildlife collection. So you are going to get your luxury topper kit, uh, which is this one just here. Remember what you're getting in here, uh, four different topper styles. You're getting two of each, which is eight in total. Uh, so this is your winter wildlife uh, topper kit which you're getting of course a part of that collection then you're going to get all of your different printed and foiled and printed cardstock which is going to go alongside this as well so you really are going to get the most gorgeous uh, luxurious finished project so they are your that's your toppers and your cardstock within there you do get that inspiration sheet which I think is brilliant because it just means especially if you're not if you're fairly new to crafting uh, and your uh, the composition is what you struggle with that's going to allow you to sort that out let me also share with you then these which are the inserts now you're getting 48 sheets in here because you're not just getting inserts you're also getting double-sided papers within there too use this on the inside of your cards if you want to get those really fancy floaty inserts or of course you can actually fussy cut that imagery and use it on the outside it's up to you but you are getting that included which is brilliant you are also getting as well don't forget in here your uh, little book which is uh, this one just here which is your winter wishes little book and again 122 sheets within there which is uh, amazing as well. So really, really cool, that particular one. Make sure you're snapping that up. Not or, or only are you getting that, of course, you are also getting, remember, uh, the card concepts within that we've just seen that they put together, which is brilliant. It's very busy on this collection at the moment. 39.99 or 57.99 is your price on this. How are we doing on the Miri card stock? Has the Miri card stock gone? Ooh. It is in baskets. It's over allocated. If it's in your basket, you need to check it out. Right, we're going to go back and we're going to look at this. The Twas the Night book. Uh, now, how are we doing on stock of this? Seventy five percent of the stock has gone here on this if it's in your basket you need to think about 
checking it out because it is exceptionally busy. It is the uh, Christmas, uh, Twas the Night Christmas Storybook. I love it, it's so cool. So many of you um, have had these previously, talk about making them uh, for friends and family, it's something you bring out every single year. Now something you, else you might want to go for, uh, as well as that, in conjunction with that, is the Twas the Night uh, Picture Perfect Pad, which is this one here. Now I know the stock of this one is also going very quickly. And what you've got in here are 48 pages, over 250, different images within here as you can see so um, really cool think about cutting these down it's just a really awesome selection of different Christmas images how are we doing on the stock of this picture perfect 60% of this one 60% uh, of this one has sold out and gone uh, so do be quick if that one is also sat in your basket. Right, very busy. Going to be, I think it's going to be the last airing for a lot of this stuff that you're seeing in the show tonight. It is so busy. We are going to look at the adorable scoreable of Twas the Night. Right, we've got to try and find that. It's, is it this it's, one? Is it that, is that, that one. one? It's that one. It's that one. Yeah. Hey, there we are. It's this one just here. Now, this is also busy. Brilliant if you want to use this with the Twas the Night. This yeah. is also just a brilliant selection of cardstock to have in your stash, isn't it? For festive crafting, Natalie. Yeah, perfect for festive crafting. You've got all the colours there that you need. It's absolutely incredible. Whether you're die cutting with this, whether you're popping it through your electronic die cutting machines, whatever you're doing with it, perfect for Christmas. Yeah, absolutely uh, glorious. Is it half gone here? Half gone there on that which is amazing a lot of people can't believe that this is your ctv debut since we re uh, referenced it really? earlier people are saying natalie's just part of the furniture she's such a <laughs> pro is what they're saying uh in the well, that's comments nice to hear isn't it it is absolutely um do the concepts come with envelopes is what miriam they was do. asking yeah yeah Brilliant. you get actually I think you get box envelopes in them because obviously you've got quite a lot of height in here. So what we're providing you with is box envelopes so you can pop them in and Brilliant. it's not going to get squished or damaged when you send it in the post. Well, that's absolutely marvellous. I know. Um, Donna Lisa's love the collection, so easy to make. Uh, Shelley Hicks says, I love the concept card, so pretty. Julie says, really love uh, the little books. Ideal for note lets and quick cards. Kathy C says, oh, that book is gorgeous, isn't it, Kathy C? Yes. Uh, Donna talking about the books as I bought to make for my grandson. You will not be disappointed. Uh, Mary Pat says, Natalie, you're doing a wonderful job on your CTV debut. Thank Bravo, you. Thank she you says. Very much. Um, Carol says, the little book is gorgeous and just right uh, for the little ones. I've got all of the nice list winners. Uh, for uh, this show and for today's socials as well. So we'll put those up towards the end of the hour. Right, next up we are going to... We are. Brilliant. We're going to go to the Twas and How are we doing uh, on the show? We've got about 25% of the stock left. So fingers know, crossed we can get through the demo before Hopefully. the stock goes, Natalie. So what we're going to do here is use some of our Snowfall Miri. Um, this one's really cool because it already has that print on here. Um, and we're going to mix and match it with our pieces. So I'm going to do a, a funky sort of stepper card for this one. I've cut my cards up down to 7 by 10 inches. Um, and that's what we're going to work with. What you want to do, um, first of all, I think I'm going to do this first. I'm going to cut my um, panels in. So what I want to do is line this up to um, 2 and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to, because we have really handy guides on our trimmers here, we've got like um, inches on here. So I'm going to line it up to the eight and I'm going to score it all the way up to the five. And then I'm going to just, um, am I going to flip it over? Let's flip it over. And then we don't have to work out another measurement. It's the easiest way to go. Hmm. And all, then this time we're going to score it from um, eight all the way up to the three inch mark um, and then we'll put it on our trimmer so now we've got those measurements in I'm going to score the first half here at um, three three inches then I'm going to score it at six inches and at eight inches and then this middle section we're going to score it at four inches so I'm just going to lightly follow that guide down there. So four inches just to that line, um, seven inches. It scores very well, this car. Consider it's a 350 GSM. You might think it would be a bit difficult to score, wouldn't you? You would think that, but no, it scores beautifully. And it really holds the, um, 
the crease as well as well. So the middle section, you want to score at four, seven and eight. And then the second, the bottom section. And I think I'm just going to flip it for this one because it'll be easier. We're just going to score it at five. I've just missed. No, I haven't. I've done it right. Um, so we've got our scores in now. And what we're going to do is mountain and valley fold these. So I have done it wrong. What I just need to do is move this one up to the four. It needed to be at four, not at five. So just make that a little bit longer. And now we can fold it. So this is going to create a like a stepper card. But all of the different panels on our stepper card are going to be at different heights, which is really quite a fun card to create when you've got um, images like you do with our Twas the Night Storybook because you can use them on the different cards, you can sort of lay them up. So just burnish all of those folds now. And then it's going to stand like this. Oh, that's card. really cool. I love that. So it's going to stand like this and now we can decorate um, this up. So just folding it back down, we're going to bring in our images and I've gone for the most sort of like iconic Father Christmas images and we're going to pop these onto some silver. So I'm just going to take this off here now and I stick that onto there and I've got two more um, pieces. So let's just add this one on and I love that one with him just flying off into the sky and then let's do his little jolly face as well. We might bring the others in. We'll see which ones work. And these are just little pieces that I had left over when I was prepping for other demos. And I thought, oh, I can bring these all together and make them work. And then I'm also going to bring in that on the edge die. Now I've already cut this out and it's a great example to show you how these dies work because they just cut out the wording and then leave you. So if you've got, say, like a a card blank and you run this through, it's just going to leave you with the words and then your whole card blank is still going to be there. Oh, so you can do different bits and pieces like that. But I've just cut it down um, because then you can use it on like the front of your cards as like a strip like we're going to do um, now. So I'm just going to pop that on here. We can peel this off once we know that that's nice and secure on there. Oops, that side's not going to do it. We need, some, we need someone to invent something that can just lift the backing off tape like a dream. If that was... We, needed to, we need to invent a new sort of tape that's we, as strong as red liner tape but as easy to use as finger lift tape. Yes, we need finger lift red liner. That's what we need. That's Sorry? What, we need finger lift red liner. That's exactly what we need. That's all we need in life. We need to get that. So I'm going to pop our jingle bells just sort of... Um, centrally on that panel there and then if I get my scissors we can trim this off here so it just sort of sits halfway across there um, and then we can bring in our images now I'm going to stick one Father Christmas up here I'm going to put the other one up there and then this one can sit really nicely across this section and I'm going to add foam pads to this just to lift it up um, to give it a little bit of height a little bit of dimension um, and give it that look that we we want. I'm also going to pop them on little funky angles because it is a very funky card, so why not? This next one we'll pop on there and then our bigger one. Let's just go in with our foam pads up the top. And then that can sit on here. I thought because we've got obviously Father Christmas on here as well, um, our snowflakes again in that silver colour are going to work really, really nicely. And it's just going to add a little bit of a touch to our smaller elements that we've got on here. So just adding them onto here. And then I'll put my second largest one on there just to pop that off a little bit. Let's just take that maybe up at the top so we're not ruining that imagery. And then I had somewhere, oh it's here, I had some little jingle bells, so I have to add these on. I've just popped them onto a little bit of red ribbon to bring in the red from obviously Santa himself. So let's just pull those off. Three days until Christmas. No, so you really need to do, really need to start thinking about that Christmas crafting. I do. I do. I'm one of those people, Joe. 
even though I make cards and I'm here making Christmas cards at this time of the year, I'm one of those people that waits until the last like week of the year to do all my Christmas cards for my family. I am really quite terrible. So just gonna add that on with a little bit of glue dot onto there, just so it sits really nicely. And then you've got your really nice sort of stepper card there. There you go. And you've got your jingle bells, so when you shake it, you can hear those jingle bells. There you go. Sorry, I'm just having a domestic There we John. I actually finished. <laughs> uh, that's brilliant. Uh, another glorious, uh, glorious project done uh, there. We were just getting. I was just a bit. I was a bit uh, caught off guard by the lack of days until Christmas. It's uh, quite honest, scary, isn't it? It's very, very close. Uh, let's just remind you then uh, of the items that we've got in the Twas the Night. So the adorable scoreable in the Twas the Night was this one just here. You can see there uh, the different colours that you've got, all perfectly colour matched to work with this particular collection which is excellent so 9.99 and 14.49 if you want to get your hands on those ones uh should we remind you of the storybook as well i know over three quarters of that storybook had gone uh, these all work so beautifully well together there's a lot of these in baskets at the moment so uh, if it is in your baskets definitely think about getting this checked out you're not going to regret it it's such a great one and again as natalie was saying earlier you can personalize this uh, you can put uh, different um, pictures into there if you want to so many different options 14.99 or 21.74 and the other thing that we've got in that particular collection of course is also this the picture perfect pad in uh, 48 sheets for you over 250 different images love that on the back side of these as well you've got all your different backgrounds there so you can really play around with those and then so many wonderful iconic Christmas images running all the way through this particular collection is a really beautiful one. $9.99 or $14.49 is your price there on that one. Oh, we lost a sheet. Hey, there it goes. Uh, we'll grab that one back. Right then, uh, let's move on. I believe we're going to go back to uh, the Christmas collection, this brand new Christmas collection uh, that we are launching for you. There's a couple of different ways of getting hold of this, of course. You can go for the Blockbuster, which is a smaller collection, and I'll share that with you as we go through, but far and away, uh, the busiest collection that we have is the Ultimate Collection. So it's your Christmas 2022 Ultimate Collection uh, that we are talking about. I'm quickly going to whiz through all the toppers that you've got. Details are here uh, on the screen for you. Uh, $67.99 or $97.99 is your price there uh, on these ones. Natalie's coming back. I'm She's going to whiz through them whilst I go and uh, fix my, uh, fix my talk go back. Fix it, go fix it. Um, so we've got four sets for you here um, in your blockbuster. We've got traditional, contemporary, um, like a cute collection and snowy. This one's your traditional collection. And as you can see, it's got your traditional colors all foiled in gold. Um, you've got beautiful foiling throughout here. You do have speciality sheets. In this one, we've got a decoupage sheet and you've got textured foiling um, on there. It's absolutely gorgeous, that image of the kids um, with the wonderful um, market scene. You've then got beautiful foil, uh, foiled cardstock that work throughout all of them, and then plain cardstock that goes through all of them. So this is um, the first four of set one. Really, really lovely imagery throughout here, and a real traditional Christmas look to it as well. So that's set one. Set two, um, we have more sort of classic Santas, you've got the religious connotation with the um, nativity and the choir there. Um, you've got the beautiful Father Christmas on the train. This image really reminds me of Polar Express. It does, isn't you know, it? The film Why the does end. he take the train though? I just wonder if he's got a, if he's got a sleigh which could fly, he doesn't have to worry about a traffic or train, train routes, though? you know. Or is it not that just the boy that... Oh, no, he doesn't... But he just get on the train, I just think, you know, would I want to, really want to cart myself to Darlington Station so and then have to what? go via Leeds to get back to Manchester when I could just fly my, my sleigh straight there? Who, who wants I to know, do that? I know, so many who questions. Who wants to do that? Um, and then 12 Days of Christmas, which has these beautiful, um, quite stylized, like Scandinavian artwork yeah. in this one uh, with all of the different images throughout here. I really, really like that one. Um, would be perfect to make sort of... Um, 
like an advent calendar with mm, as well. Yeah, really, really, really nice really one. Lovely. Um, and then we go on to a festive style. This one's your contemporary uh, mix. And you can see that with the style of the artwork that's been selected. We've got the three kings there in the beautiful sort of midnight blues and um, sort of golden colours. The really, really cute reindeer here, again, with beautiful detailing throughout. Um, and quite a lot of texture as well within there and patterns within their sort of fur, which is lovely. Um, the third one piece of earth has the blue foiling. You've got the beautiful dove imagery there um, and those sort of really nice sort of stars throughout the background. I love that. And then our snowing in the city, which is just incredible. Um, the most fun because it's got the most colour on of any of the mm. toppers. It's really, really lovely. Really, really gorgeous, that one. Um, and then our second selection of this... Um, Top of set, you've got your um, decoupage with the poncettias. That's really, really nice. And I think it's They've nice. become like a real classic Christmas flower, haven't I they? I think so. Like, if you think of flowers at Christmas, it's either a Christmas rose, but like top, top level Top is a tier. Got to be a poncettia, yeah. Um, then you've got cosy Christmas. This one's really cool. And I think really on trend as well with how everyone had to sort of staycation over the last mm, couple of years. A lot great more point. people have camper vans, places to stay like that. So that one's a great one for that. And I love this cardstock. This That's really cute, is isn't beautiful it? beautiful for mm. fussy cutting. Gorgeous. Um, then we've got our Christmas cocktails. That one's really fun. I love the colours in there as well. And then our festive sparkle with the beautiful ballerinas um, and this uh, sentiment to my beautiful dancing queen at Christmas. You can mm. remember, you can imagine oh, that's all, all of us at Christmas. getting that all of us at Christmas. <laughs> After a few sweet sherries, that's all of us, Natalie. Um, then we've got snowy days. In snowy days, you've got your real Christmas feel. You've got snow across all of them. Uh, we've got Christmas blessings, which again has the church. Father Christmas, which is the lovely decoupage sheet. Um, greetings of the season. Uh, which has the beautiful um, artwork there in front of Buckingham Palace. Um, very, very regal. And finally, your lovebirds, um, which one is really, really, really sweet. And I think perfect for any winter weddings that you might have coming up as well. Absolutely. So think about how you can use these differently too. Um, Merry Christmas to you has the sheep on there. And then we've got Seasons Tweetings with the little robin and the um, very, very cute donkey So as well. cute. Snowman Kisses has textured foiling throughout all of your um, middle frames and those really nice skinny borders on there as well. Um, and then the winter hideaway is just spectacular. I can already imagine that there's a log fire on in there, the mulled wine is out, and there's at least three mince pies has been eaten. Oh, three mince pies in the last hour? Yeah. Alone, <laughs> absolutely. Just in the last hour. <laughs> and then finally, we have our last set, which is Christmas Cuties. This one's this really one fun. Fun for younger audiences as well. Is it Christmas Yeti? Yeah, that's <laughs> How so many fun. days is it till Christmas? 163. There we go. There you go. <laughs> um, and then we've got the dogs there with their Santa hats on. This one's a very cute imagery. Um, maybe first Christmas, things like that. That one's going to work perfect for. And then we have the Merry Christmas, which is um, very traditional in artwork style, um, but still has that cute theme um, with it being the little mouse. And then the final four are um, very, very cute. We've got the cow which is absolutely gorgeous with the robins on top of his head. Um, we've got the penguins, which look like they've been making these um, jumpers like the whole of the year. They're so cool, away, aren't they? Yeah. Um, with their baubles on. Then you've got the polar bears, the super sweet cold polar bears with this lo lovely teal foiling on here. And that runs throughout your whole topper set. And the last one is Snow Much Fun, um, which has the very cute snowman on. Really cute, isn't it? Fun. It's just incredible how much you get in here and how much thanks for the hand i needed so, so, so much well. absolutely there is so so much are you Amazing. going to be able to do with these i'm going to take you through uh, the rest of the ultimate collection i need to let you know the blockbuster and the ultimate are both half gone i'm not surprised so it's whether we have enough stock to last the rest so. of the day uh right let's quickly run through then natalie what else is coming included yes. uh, you are going to get aren't you in the ultimate the magazine uh, as well in the blockbuster in the you blockbuster get the you get the magazine well. you also right. get it in the ultimate too yeah in the blockbuster which is the smaller price one that we've got on screen for you today you're going to get um all of the um, toppers and you're going to get Absolutely. this magazine. And this magazine we designed in-house. Um, we split the collection between the team and we made cards just using what you're going to get at home. So you're not going to get this home and think, oh, I'd like to make that card. I'd like mm. to make that card. 
but I, maybe I can't because it's using the same toppers. Well, you absolutely can. And that's what's amazing about this. Yeah, that's that we, really cool. We've thought about that and we've designed it for those people that maybe have never crafted before. Um, but you get this included and it has full guides of what cardstock works with what cardstock, how it's all been designed together. You also get um, double-sided papers in the middle of that. You do indeed, you yeah. Free, and they coordinate really nicely with your kit too. So if you want to use these alongside it to make it stretch more, to do different things, you can do that. And it's really, really cool. Uh, so that's well, these are both coming in the Ultimate, but if you want to get them on their own, so all the toppers we've shared with you and this magazine, that's your Blockbuster. So let's give you the details mm -hmm. of the Blockbuster really, really quickly. We will bring those details in for you for the Blockbuster. Here it comes. Uh, $44.99 or $64.99 is your price on that, saving you £40 or $60, which is excellent. Let's flip those details, though, back to the yes. Ultimate because we want to get all of it. And so much more with yeah, this. Yeah, the um, Ultimate is outselling the Blockbuster something like four to one at I'm the moment, surprised. which I'm not surprised, not surprised. whatsoever. Um, uh, and again, the little book, which is great because I love that it encompasses all the collections of little books. Yeah, you've got all of the artwork in here that runs throughout the um, Blockbuster in sort of like different um, viewpoints as well. So you'll have like, some like zoomed in images, some further away images. The artwork's been used differently. Um, you get six of each design in here as well, which means you can create decoupage toppers if you want to just by snipping away and creating your own layers. That's going to look incredible um, alongside your cardstock as well. You can also just pop these onto a six by six card, add a sentiment, and you've got really quick and easy cards straight away. Mm, so, think, so cool. I think if you're crafting and you're crafting with kids as well, it's a good thing to keep the blockbuster to yourself, but then give this to the kids to craft, make their own cards with, because you know, you've got so much included in here, um, and they're going to have so much fun crafting with this. Yes, they really, really are. A really gorgeous one, uh, that one just there. We've then got all of our different inserts as all well, haven't them. we? And there's so many <laughs> really uh, within here. So I'm not going to flick through them all individually, but I'll no. just show you the different collections that you're getting then. So you're going to get the... Um, snow days and I'm right in thinking 16 of each uh, in 16 these 16 of each so you get two um, designs that work with each topper um, and they are just sort of like really nice muted versions of the main blockbuster cardstock itself um, you have the ability to put these through your printer if you're someone who likes to have a really big verse at Christmas you can absolutely do that you can stamp on them you can heat emboss them um, and like Joe said they are so so nice that you can even put them on the front of your cards Mm, absolutely, you can. Yeah. Did you want to run over to the other yeah, side just to get ready go. for that card of the show whilst I just share with you the other element that you are getting within here, which is, of course, uh, the adorable scorable, which is this now 350 GSM with that bendy ink technology on there, which means, of course, that you are going to uh, not get any cracking in your score lines, which is absolutely brilliant. So you've got uh, all of that within there now. What I'm thinking, uh, so let me just finish that one off first. $67.99, $97.99. Saves you £60 or $87. Platinum members, £54.39 or $78.39. And you're getting double points, remember. I need to let you know over half the stock now of both the Blockbuster and the Ultimate set has gone. The Miri card as well. I'll give you the details again for the Miri card. It has sold out. If it's in your basket, you need to remove it. I'll just flash those details up uh, in a second. Um, so half these, over half has gone of the Ultimate and the Blockbusters. Jamie, did we pick? Did we announce the card of the show at the end of the last show? Did we, Natalie? What was it? I don't know. Did remember. we? We voted. It was one of your cards. Did I tell you that what, what, which one of your cards won no, in the early show? No, no, no. I don't we think didn't. we did. No. And no one told me off. So, I mean, it's, it's, ultimately, it's my fault, but I'm wow. not going to take the blame. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna have to look back and see. Let's vote on the card of the show for this show whilst we figure out what we're gonna do about the one we missed earlier. <laughs> so this time we've got our incredible Jingle Bell stepper uh, with those um, sort of um, steps that run down. We've got the really cool sort of fold back easel with the beautiful blue foiling on. And then we've got the concept card that we created, and this is something that you guys will be creating at home when you get that kit. It's so, so simple to put together. 
Uh, absolutely beautiful. One, two or three. Get your votes in. I'm on the way to the list. The nice list. Mine and Ben's uh, nice list, in fact, because we have got uh, lots of people to be adding up on here. I am going to have to roll this up a little bit, though, because no one wants to see me bend over from this angle. Uh, <laughs> let's face it. It's not going to be uh, pretty. So we'll roll it up and we'll roll it back down later. We are uh, coming towards the very last... We are coming towards... Uh, the very last of our winners. So I have got today's social winners uh, ready to go on the board. So let's pop those on. Today's social winners are, uh, in the UK, Samantha Dawkins. I'd be terrible at doing this, Joe. Sorry? My spelling's awful. Oh, I'm terrible. So it's only because someone's written it down for me. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Samantha Dawkins, you are the winner from the UK. You need to email us, please, prizes at craftscompanion.com. You've won a goodie bag, and don't go anywhere, because a little later, you might be winning £500 or $500 uh, worth of uh, spend. You spend it on what you like, as long as you spend it on our website. Uh, and then uh, the US winner is Marilyn Campbelljohn. I'm going to have to be careful with this one. Uh, so, Marilyn. That's correct. Uh, Campbelljohn. There we are, Marilyn Campbell-John. Uh, you are a winner as well. Uh, you're going up on uh, our, my nice list. Also, as is, who else is going up there? Uh, Miriam Robinson. Miriam Robinson, you are the winner from this show as well. Wow. You're, I feel like Oprah. You get a nice list. I you know, get a nice list. You get a nice list. Miriam. Miriam Robinson, you're getting a goodie bag as well. Let's pop you up on for here as well. Uh, There you are. Uh, up they go. Right, let's uh, also go through the Crafts Beautiful nominations, um, which of course, I think they were announced just this week, the categories in which we were nominated. So let's pop those up on the screen for you and go through them. So get over to the website uh, and fling us a vote, please. We'd love to win some of these. Uh, here they all are. So there's 11, hang on. Earlier, the graphic said we were nominated in 11 categories. Now the graphic says we we're nominated in 12. Not another one. Uh, now it says uh, we're in 12. Oh, we forgot one. Look at that. We didn't, I mean, we got nominated in so many categories, we didn't even realise. It was the most loved stamping range. That wasn't on there earlier. Are we going to go through the pictures of everyone looking gorgeous? Let's then, uh, let's have a little look at all those pictures. So, uh, Sarah, of course, uh, Crafting Woman of the Year uh, is the, um, that category there. You've also then got Craig as Crafting Man of the Year. He has been nominated. Uh, Designer of the Year for Leanne Chivers. Uh, the Chiv is there. Uh, we've also got, what, Favourite Die Cutting Range. That is there. Also, uh, we have been nominated for uh, Most Love Scrapbooking Collection, uh, which is this one just here. So you can definitely throw us a vote for that. Then Best Workshop or Online Class. I thought this was going to be Craft Along, but we've actually been nominated for Academy of Colour. Mm, intriguing. Mm. Best Rated Customer Services. Also, Most Love UK Craft Chain Store. You can uh, vote for us there. Or you can vote for us uh, as best online store as well. This is the one we'd love, isn't it? Most love crafts TV shopping channel. Uh, so do for us a vote for that one. Uh, and then we also have got best brand for crafts, best brand for crafts. And then have we got one as well for stamping? Is that the last one? That's the last one. Oh, look, I'm not even there anymore. <laughs> uh, piff, paff, poof, here I am. Uh, demo of the show uh, is numero uno, Natalie. This one with the we'll have to try and We'll have to try and go back through the earlier show, see which, oh, one, it which was, one it was, and then see if you can remember what number that actually referred to. Oh, it yeah, was the first <laughs> demo you did in the wake-up call was the was card of the oh, show. Oh, okay, the one with the... Um the Buckingham Palace on. It was yes, that one. That I think was that was the one. one. We'll put yeah. that. We'll put yeah. that one in. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. It was wrong yesterday. Honestly, oh, no. I nearly got lynched leaving this place last night. 
because the wrong we put the wrong oh. card from the wake up call in the vote oh, and no. then after that everyone says that it didn't stand we cannot take into account historical voting anomalies if you unless it's raised there and then at the time we've decided that's it natalie okay. i mean it is it is hard we've it's got hardcore. to have some rules otherwise what, the rules. where would we be i mean it would literally i mean there'd be no, no democracy would there we're no. descending the whole of society would descend into chaos what time are we seeing natalie back here on crafters tv She's going to be back seven. at 7 o'clock. 7. I'll uh, be here. Here in the UK. Brilliant. That's 2 p.m. Uh, if you are over on the East Coast, uh, which is 11 a.m. for West Coasters. Before that then, though, we've got a masterclass in two parts. It's all about glue. We're going to be getting sticky with Jan uh, for a couple of hours. So 6 p.m. here in the UK, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, 10 a.m on the west coast that is um when jan's gonna be here first for an hour then we're gonna have an hour in natalie and all things hunky dory and then we're gonna have another hour with jan <sighs> don't think there's a lot going on at the moment isn't so there much. It's, it's just it's, it's a lot isn't it it's now crazy. there's also <laughs> crazy by, by the <laughs> friday is happening over on the website because we needed something else to talk about uh make sure you get over to there have a little look at all the items that are there for five pounds or five dollars as part of the Fiverr Friday sale. Don't forget you've got double points as well and you, <laughs> you've only got until right, the end of today, out. midnight, wherever you are, to take advantage of the double points. Are we going to, have we had it confirmed, Jamie? Are we announcing the 500 pound spend winner in our latest show? We'll have to find out. That's getting less. That went from, yeah, I think so probably in the earlier show too uh -huh. we'll have to find out now is where we're at um so yeah let's see we'll see where we end up with that massive thanks to natalie we'll see you Thank back you. here in a couple of time biggest thanks of course uh, to all of you guys don't forget to check out your baskets especially if it's on uh the uh, twas and i and also all of those brilliant uh christmas collections that we have i will see you back here with the headmistress herself nana jan in an hour's time take care